All right, and we're live. So, the plan for today is I'm gonna get a one commit in real fast for the side project, and then we're gonna work on a whole bunch of stuff. We got a little bit of stuff to do on uh, checkers to get it up and running. We've got to get like, well, I mean, it's already there, but a little bit of polishing. So, for example, the animations. Whenever you do like multiple jumps, I want it to show like going to one and then the next and so on. Um, which I can demonstrate somehow. But okay, yeah, you saw that. I like the checkers piece just goes straight down. I want to change that so that it's, you know, it, you see the jumps. Other than that, I mean, it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. I also saw something, someone said something about like chess being a bit odd when you promote a piece. So let me test that out real fast. I'll just play against Brain Dead so that I can actually do this relatively easy. Okay, so if I say queen... Oh, it broke! Yeah, you see that? It's busted. So that's a bug. Somebody reported that. They're like... Hi, Hard. Welcome back. Glad you're doing well. So yeah, this is a bug. And if I refresh, it's probably going to say that it's actually a, a queen piece. What? On Earth? <laughs> oh, it's a core. Howdy. Did I code chess? Yeah. So, okay, there is a regression then. This right here. I didn't even see this. My tests are basically just the audience. They just tell me, they're like, oh yeah, your piece, it should show the new piece when you get promoted. And I'm like, it does. And then I look, and it doesn't. Oh no. But it'll be relatively easy. Okay. So this is what I wanted to do. All right. I'm gonna stop the old thingamabobber real fast, switch on over to Funi, and then I'm gonna switch back. Because I, I do wanna fix that one thing on the side project that we were working on. Um, all right, let's see. So whistle proxy thing sometimes doesn't want to start, but you just keep trying it, and then it eventually works. All right, Cor, I can take that. I can check it. Take a look at that later. Shema, what's that? Oh, that's what you call chess. Uh, chess. A very nice EDM song. Thanks, Core. Okay, so it's busted locally. The interesting thing is that it actually works here. So why then? Hmm. Okay, this is tricky. Uh, learn Russian? Oh goodness. I think my biggest hang up with Russian is they've got like the funny symbols for like the letters. And so that's kind of like Japanese or Chinese. I mean, I guess it's, it's probably a lot simpler to learn. So it has to do with like the placeholder when you pick up a piece. Oh, 
Hangul, yeah, definitely. I considered that because um, that would be pretty cool. Happy to you too, Hardman. Yeah, I like Hangul. Um, I actually wish I had learned Korean because even if I didn't know what the word meant, I'd at least be able to read the word. And I also like that it's phonetic. So unlike in English, where sometimes the sounds are different to the letters, in Korean it's, you know, you can just read it. It's like, it's great. Because grammar's the same? Oh, I didn't know that. Ohio to you too, Hardman. Let's see. So chess, check the board. Okay, so there's something that occurs when the player makes a move. Which has to be this. Thing is, I don't know when the regression occurred. Good morning, Vim. Doing pretty good. Okay, so I think... Yeah, 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 this here. If we promote the piece, change its image at the end. Piece, the shorthand is changed. And for some reason... Maybe this isn't happening? Well, here the shorthand actually does get passed. Get passed to piece, okay. Let's just do some extra logging here. Maybe this will give me enough info. Hello to you too, Alvi. Okay. So if I move this piece, then I will accidentally win. Uh, okay. Great. Um, that's not at all what I expected. It's like it never came to the on complete. Maybe that's part of the problem. Wait a minute. Didn't we make a change to this? Where we wrapped the game object? And it's now a container? Because we wanted to support having um, king pieces be like a stack of pieces? Chess game? Yeah, Alvi. Akar, howdy! How's it going? How's your streaming going?
You're departing for London. Jeez. That's uh, that's huge. You bring the stream gear with you. I need to learn how to do that. Because um like when I go to TwitchCon, for example, it would be cool to be able to stream. Even if not this year. First time trying it. Let me know how it goes. That's actually pretty cool. Your Twitch comeback had one role. You have to be portable. But your MacBook. That's huge. Let buy a MacBook. Wow. Is this like a just like a regular MacBook Pro or is this like a new MacBook Pro? Hi, Sir Julian. An M1 Pro. Okay, so I probably can't do this. Well, I mean, I could, maybe I could do it on my... But what about like your webcam and stuff? I'm guessing you probably don't use the, the built-in webcam for that. That's really bummer. Multiple screens. They have portable screens. There's like multiple ways and like use a DSLR. That's uh that's tough. Like those are pricey. Um I just use like a simple Bria. But um yeah, for multiple screens, because you're on a Mac, there's like that thing where you can have like a tablet or something and hook it up as like a second monitor. Um and then like there's other portable screens and stuff you can use. Because I considered that at one point. Oh, why is the thing so dark that you see that? It's like double dark. That's a bug. Just because of that? Fair enough. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Oh, that's the bug. It's a container. It's not an image. Then, how do I do this part? Get back to peace. It looks like all I do is just set it as the very first one. Simple enough. Sounds good, a car. Morning to you, Frost. The 1M redeemable. Wait, what 1M redeemable? What is a 1M redeemable? Um, I don't think there was. At least, not to my knowledge. But... If you let me know what it should be, then I will um, consider adding one. How do I say they so motivated on my side project? Oh, um, I don't know. I just keep at it. Side project meaning like the thing that we do on the weekends? Or do you mean the thing that we do like this thing? Because this is not a side project. This is the main project. The thing I do on the weekends? I don't know, it's just like I've got more things I want to add to it, so I'm gonna add those things to it, and then once I'm in a, it's in a happy place, we'll go on to the next side project.
All right, there we go. I think that's what I'm looking for. And now we just change all these entities here to this. Oh, well, I love coding and money. So, you know, like, it, it works. Update these children. Exactly, Core. Hi, Prophets. The acorn super stretch TypeScript limo. Yeah, it's gotta be TypeScripts. No rest here. Okay, so I think the update set piece or piece children. I think this one needs to be the regular entity. The hair dye change? Yep. It's a, it's a lighter. Alright, I think that's what I want. Let's take a look and see if it works. Thanks, Prophets. Appreciate it. I think it worked. Oh. I'm getting wrecked by a really terrible butt. Oh my gosh, I'm losing all my pieces. No. Not fair. Okay, so I've got to fix one more bug, and that one is that... If there's multiple moves, it's like doubling up the thing. Is it also made with React? Yep. Yeah. I mean, well, sort of, not really. It kind of lives a bit outside, so all the updates that are coming in from the server go through React and cause updates to the scene, which is done in Phaser. But I'm going to switch this out. I'm going to just remove Phaser. Just completely remove it from Phony eventually and replace it with 3 Fiber. At least for the new games. Okay, so this moves thing. Uh, well, we fixed this bug first, so let's go ahead and remove these console logs. Get that out there. Hi, Isaac. Reduce your context. I'm surprised that that was just in there. Oh well. Was my hair orange before I dyed it? Uh, yeah, it was like orange and purple and green and and like a rainbow color, and it sparkled. Um, yeah, like a thousand colors. Yeah, and it just like changed constantly. No, um, it was not orange. It was like just a bit darker. Hi, green. Orange hair. That would be interesting. Darker. Yeah, basically just darker. It's like this, but darker. Uh, 
All right, so what I want to do now is um, container. Okay, fix chest piece promotion. So now I have to do something with get piece indicators or get move indicators. How do the move indicators actually appear? Okay, this is how it works. Get indicators for move of moves. And then it just adds to it, building a game object at each of the locations. I think it's as simple as just like if we have an X and a Y, just don't add the same X Y multiple times. The pictures are gone. What pictures? Oh wait, the other one fell too. Ah. Oh. Okay, I have to go clean the wall a bit, and I need like a stronger sticky thing apparently. Too much action. That's, I can't believe it. Like one fell off yesterday and then the other fell off today. I was waiting for the this side of it to dry so that I can stick it back up there. Um, but I only have one extra magnet -y thing. So I need some super duper ultra tape. Finally understand it. No, green. You can't say this. I, I miss my pictures. I like them a lot. Checks on the plant watering. Yes, profits. Plant is fine. This is why I got this particular plant, because it doesn't need to be watered as often. Only one of them is bad. What? Unreal. Neither is bad. They're both fantastic. I was actually playing Final Fantasy X yesterday. Like. I was in an Uber, right? So I had the like Steam Deck and I was playing it on it and it's quite awesome. Snake plants thrive on neglect? Yeah, pretty much cry. If I overwater this thing, then it would be bad for it. So I need to not overwater it. I appreciate it, Prophets. So const, um, what do I want to call this? I guess I'll just do indicators, you guys can set.
Where is my autocomplete? Yo, IntelliJ, where's my autocomplete? How do you expect me to code without autocomplete? What on earth? Okay, maybe I just need to restart it. A nice one, Core. I need more level rewards or something. Like, more things to get between each of the levels. Um, like, it would be, in the ideal world, there'd be something to get at every level. But we can't just release a new cosmetic at every level, at every level. So it needs to be something else. But I don't know what exactly to do. Oh, that's not badminton, that's tennis. What language is this? Um, TypeScript. I was gonna say English, but um, no, it's TypeScript. <laughs> Thanks, Alvi. Appreciate it. All right, so here's the plan. I'm just gonna close IntelliJ, and then hopefully, when I open it back up, this will actually work properly. I have an idea. Let's do this. I'm gonna restart my whistle. Assembly language? Oh goodness. Stand as the German word. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like the point managers group, they always come out with these amazing tools. You know, you've got Zeus Stand, you've got Jotai, you've got Valtio, you've got React 3 Fiber. It's just ridiculous. It looks similar to Python. Um, it looks similar to Java, I'd say. M much more so than Python. Oh, there we go. Now we have it back. Because with Python, your types are optional. Similar to Eng Oh, God. Yes, yes. My code is very similar to English. That's right. That's That's my goal. Okay, so does the one this one here do a boolean? It does not. I prefer the set where whenever you have like an add, it returns whether it, the element was in the set before. That was nice. I think that's how it works with um, with Java. I think. Yeah, that's a specified element. And then the return returns true if the set did not already contain them. See, like this was nice. I liked this about Java. Just the return type for the boolean like or the uh, for the add and remove. 
That was useful. Alright, there we go. That should work. So now, it should only add a single indicator at a spot. No more duplicate indicators. There we go, all fixed. You can tell it's fixed because it's not like super dark anymore. Dinos are beating you so bad. You know, Core, I considered making them harder. I considered making it where the dinos will actively pursue you if you get bubbled, so that if they think they can get to you in time, They'll just beeline straight to, like, popping you. Um, but that might make them too hard. The current version is good, yeah. I feel like it's pretty fair. Like, they're tough, but they're sometimes fair. And I kind of like the randomness to it, where you'll get bubbled and you'll be like, oh no, is this it? Are they gonna get me? And then sometimes you get lucky and they don't get you, and that's a nice feeling. Okay, so now we need to start up the game server. Alright, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get my tea. Play song of time. Oh no, my X my Y got reversed. Oh well, at least it still works. Is it black coffee? Uh no, this is tea. Mission failed. Mission failed successfully. Oh, that's right. I remember now. I think we had a bug where um, if uh, if your king 
then you don't have to take a piece when you have to take a piece. I think. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, you do have to. Okay, so it's not broken. A four-letter word. A four-character word. I, too, can pronounce four. Green tea? No, this is... This is not green. Yulong is really good. It's one of my favorites. I need to order more green tea, actually. Okay, so then do, I think what checkers is pretty much fixed. We just have to add the other game modes. Is that where it's at? I thought we had some bugs. Let me let me check this. See what we've got going on here. Fix the animation, and then power ups. Okay. So I guess it's good. All right. animation and jumping multiple pieces. Okay, so how do I want to do that one? The question I have is, if I do the jump... Do I want to see the jump on my own pieces? I think I almost- I kind of do. Okay, so I kind of want this. Maybe it's this blue piece. Let's see. Alright, let's see. Roll forward with the new moves. So this is where we're at, and this right here, this is what does the animations. So I think this is what I want. Because I think this will give me a list of all the possible moves. And then, um, or not. Okay.
I miss sharing the board base code over multiple games. Yes, basalt. Yeah, chess, checkers, any kind of game that's like a board like that is using the same uh, code. So I want to do this, get chain to moves. I think this is what I want. Because then it grabs the longest chain. So maybe what I need to do is expose a method for this. Because I want all of the different positions. Yeah, this is what I need right here. This is hurting your brain. <laughs> oh no. I'm sorry, obituary. This is, um, yeah, we're just making a small change so that the pieces animate when you're moving from one checkers piece to another. And you know how there can be multiple hops and checkers. All we're doing here is just returning each of those hops so that we can do a nice little animation. And we're almost done with it, so it's not too complicated. I appreciate it, thanks. I mean, it also helps that um, I wrote it, so. Get longest chain, so all we do now is do this. What you mentioned do I use? Well, it's mostly custom with my own ECS, although I use Phaser for rendering. Isn't it a lot easier to make games with the game engine? Yes, it is. Like, if I was using something like Unity after the ramp up time, I'd be able to make games way faster. Less active on YouTube or other platforms? This is right, super. I'm mainly on Twitch. I'm still working out how to do YouTube and TikTok and all the other stuff. I'm really curious what the IRS is up to so far. Thirty-five seventy-nine. I need more tipping. The IRS needs its gold. Why not use game engines? Uh, because this is like web games, right? So it's just, I don't know. With web games, the Unity and Unreal, they're just not 
super great right now. They're okay, but they leave a little bit to, to be desired. What is the IRS? The IRS is the, um, the tax authority of Funi. So all of the tips and things get taxed a small amount. It's like a gold sink. You can also click this button for a gold sink where you lose gold. So uh, if you just if you want less gold, you can click the button and you can watch this number go up. And this is shared across everybody. Port everything to flash. Oh goodness. Sony crypto. You joke, but I did consider, like, we could do, like, a Funi coin or something, and then, uh, I don't know if I want to do that, but, um, it could be, like, shares or something, I guess. I don't know. I, not really something I particularly want to do. Yeah, muted for a sec. Profits. I know, I know. I have a mute button. Also care to the game logic? Yeah. All of it. Like, front end and back end, right? It's uh, been a lot of time. A lot of work. Um, except for like the design. Don't do design, images, sound, audio. A coin? Oh my god. Alright, I think this is good. Peace move already. Okay, what do I want to do here? How long have I been doing this? Partner win, right? I mean, the Twitch count is coming up. At this point, I may not be able to go to the partner party. I'll check on it again. What are my normal streaming times? Around now. No, I don't use a... I don't use a capture card or anything. Then they have to review it. PLZ, I don't know. I don't know about that one. In review. It's still in review. I like how they have achievements too, yeah, it's cool. Hi Fire Pro, I'm doing pretty well. Oh man, I know green. I'm really I'm really looking forward to it. Well we'll just have to hope. Uh, I guess. I'm not sure what else I can really do. How long have I been making this game for? Oh, I've been working on Twinning about two years. Okay, get longest chain. Um, I'll never let you go. 
That's what I was doing. I was rebuilding a shared loot. Alright, so now that's done. Move piece. Moves it into you from from to two. Is that all it does? Seems like that's all it does. Now the question is... How do I want to do... I think what I want to do is have move allow like a list. obituary so if it supports a list now then we have moves let's do it this way Let me make sure that an object is not in a right here. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Cor. The smart, right? Like, this has happened to me so many times. And it's kind of crazy, like, there's people now at level 40 in Dynamite. It's unreal. That is... That's like the highest level on Fooney. In any game, I think. I don't think anyone's a higher level. And I count level 22. Jeez, Zooks. Okay, so it seems like most people can hit 10. Like most of the like the hardcore players. But actually quite a few people. What is this? <laughs> wow. These two right here, so similar. Oh my goodness. A truly something special right there. A reminder of Retro Memo, 100%. That is amazing. Again, oh no. Alright, so now we know we have at least it moves zero, and then we can do this as well. I wish I could do at. Oh, can I? I don't know. I think it's too new to use it. Because even though it says I can use it... Yeah, 
Yeah, it's like 89%. It's too early to use it. Well, I guess it would get compiled, so it's probably fine. Whatever. I'm not going to use it yet. Because this works too. Oh, thanks, Taylor. My Twitch stats are impressive. I appreciate it. Um, I, I tried really hard. Like, I don't know if uh, if you can tell or whatever, but I I am trying really, really hard. But it's also a lot of fun. See the moon? I mean, yeah. It's just like, it just goes up and to the right. Because of the dance. Oh god. The dance moves. Yeah, it's something else. I still remember we had to do a dance whenever I was in high school. Um, so this was like for a theater class, and that was fun. I I danced to um, uh, I'm bringing sexy back, and um, that was a time. That was a time. Okay, let's see. I think this is pretty much done. Just gotta go here and on the twins. This X and Y here needs to be a little bit different. Hmm. So I think what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what I want to do for this. Well, one of these has no animation. What one is more? Dinos and Knights? Oh, I don't know. I'd say it's about equal. Dinos are mighty mighty. I need the tween. I probably do. Yeah, I think this is okay. Uh, hopefully this doesn't break anything. I 
Hi, Bertoya, welcome back. Good to see you again. Alright, so we're gonna do twins. Well, not that time. Things got push. The hundred bots. Oh my goodness. Set the duration, do the animation, all this jazz. Okay, so here is where the thing in my bobber gets a little teeny bit different. We're gonna divide this by moves. So that way, if you do like a whole bunch of jumps, it'll go like super fast, like zoom. And we can change this up. We can make it take longer. We can do it where. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see what this looks like. I have no idea what this is gonna do. But I'm hoping that this will look kinda neat. Okay, so now the piece allows you to take a whole list. So now I can do this. So we start the language server. Hopefully, it picks up the change. Nope. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of engine is this? It's engine of type E, which is a type engine, which is something. It's a checkerboard. Hmm, that would do it. So all I need to do is go over to board, which is, um, Here. There we go. What is this? A licensed flamingo? I love the bot names. I just, I like the random names. It's so great. And sometimes you get one that's just like, whoa. Those are the best. Here and here. Howdy. Welcome back. I'm doing great. Especially now. Oh, we have done so much over the past few weeks. We've got like a new website for doing like steering the direction of Hoonie. So if you want to make a poll, then you can make a poll about anything and people can vote on it. Just share it around. And after a week, we get results. 
and you can see what the winners are. So for example, should we be able to see number of people who voted on a poll? Uh, everybody said yes. So now you can see that. You can see number of people who voted on a poll, total votes right here. And you can also mouse over them to see who the winner is and how many votes it received. And you can also see like in the background, it shows as well, like a percent kind of thing. It's the community board thing, yeah. Yeah, I made it. We made this, this is the side project that we made. It's open source too. I'll have to put like a link to it somewhere on this so that you can people can actually see it. Yeah, like it's still super basic, but we're going to make it awesome over the next few weeks. And thanks, you're into here. Yeah. We're using T3 stack for it, so planet scale and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, it's basically free to host and all that stuff. It's also open source, so anybody can take a look at it. Anybody can make a pull request or make an issue. Say, okay, great. Add search functionality right yet. Yeah, totally need to do that. Oh yeah, got to do this too. This is a this is a really good one. These are great issues. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and get this committed. How's discoverability going on Journey? Oh man, I've got so much work to do for that. It's not going, because I haven't done much. We still need to put our other games up on Crazy Games and a whole bunch of other stuff. I was kind of working on checkers. Um, goodness, that's a lot of, a lot of users. Wow, it recovered. It's actually doing pretty good. Yeah, we're sitting at 2530 day actives. And shockingly, Brazil is quite popular. Which um, is that country over over here somewhere in Europe? Um, I'm kidding. I know I know where Brazil is now. Yeah, look at that. That's a huge, a huge, huge, huge. That's, I love it. I love, I love looking at numbers. It's great. Oh, welcome. I'm glad you're here, Ren. How much does Firebase cost on that many? Uh, if you get to about this amount of usage, then you're looking at actually paying a little bit of money. Um, let me look at this, right? Like. You've got a five to six million document reads a day, which this just keeps increasing. Like it's ridiculous. So that's a, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. Um, this is more than six million rows read on Planet Scale. This would be the equivalent of like a lot more, <laughs> just because of the way the data is structured, right? So you could imagine this being like. 600 million rows read on planet scale probably but you can obviously get that number down with some optimization with firestore you basically this is already optimized as much as it's gonna get uh, so for that reason i much prefer planet scale but the pricing it's not fantastic let me hold on So here's kind of what it looks like, but this is since the start of this month. That's a lot. Actually, that's that's a lot. It's like um, two dollars a day now, plus Kubernetes, which is still the majority cost. 
So this is, yeah, it's, uh, it's starting to get up there. Last month was 41, before that was 27. 14 before that. 4 before that. That's actually quite a big difference. Oh god. Okay, but luckily we applied for um, the free credits. So somebody from Google actually reached out to me. And apparently there's this thing if you're a startup. You can go to cloud.google.com slash startup and you can do an application. This is meant for people who are VC backed, but because Funi is self-founded, we don't actually have any uh, VC backing, um, which is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in that I can do things my own way. It's less stress. It's a curse in that there are limited opportunities for, to us. This is one of those opportunities that's kind of limited, but the Google rep told me to apply anyways. What is VC backed? So uh, VC or venture capital is this kind of like investors. Okay. Um, basically you have a business plan, you pitch it to investors. If they like your product project or whatever, and they think you've got a solid plan and solid execution, then you can get funding, but you have to give them a percent of your company and they get to get a little bit of control over that, meaning, you know, they can kind of swing you into doing a certain direction or making things to the thing that you don't want, or they can like have like time pressure where you must reach a certain number of like monthly active users or a certain amount of growth or something by a certain time in order to keep receiving more investments or there's all sorts of things. Um, so I'm personally not a fan of it because I don't like the extra stress. I prefer just doing things really, really simple. So we don't actually have any VC backing. Seems like a, well, you know, it's a, a lot of people go that route, but it's not a route that I want to go down. I, you know, I treat this as like a semi-retirement almost. This is what I do for fun. It's a hobby. I work really hard at it, but I try not to stress out about it. Me too, Nuno. Me too. Okay, so I think I want to rebuild the shirt up. Something just yours? Yeah, that's basically where I'm at. You know, you know, this is like just ours and so we'll take it in whatever direction we see fit. They accept payments in acorns? Yes. When I sell, I definitely want to receive my money in acorns. So instead of receiving dollars, I just want them to buy like, you know, millions of acorns and then just like drop it on my doorstep and that'll be an acceptable payment please don't quote me on this uh i, I really don't want that many acorns Okay, so that should be fixed. Checkers, checkerboard. So now load from state. This thing in my bobber here. This is what I want. Get the longest chain. Pass and a move. Oh. Oh, right. 
Yeah, this is diff okay. Let's um let's change that up. That's why I do this, because I want to write it in one way, and then this is an adapter that converts it to the other way. Righto. At what point is too many? I would say anything over about 10, 10 acorns is probably too many. Most of my clips must be on YouTube. Thanks, Supermind. Yeah, if I say anything that you really like, or that sounds clippable or something, just take a clip of it. And because I've got my brother going through, looking for things that have the most views, things that people actually like, and then He's taking those and he's putting them on my TikTok and on my YouTube. So if you if I explain something clearly, um, I need y'all to clip it because that way I can stick it up there and grow the channels and stuff. Because there's no way I can go through seven hours of video every day. Um, it just is it's not really possible. 31 high? Um, 420 high. 31 just a number. The three critical? What? I am so confused, Cor. <laughs> Make br my brother do it? Yeah, you know. He helps. Oh, you're talking- oh, okay. Well, yeah, you know how it is, Cor. Yeah, I guess I should update the packages. Oh well. What's the worst that could happen? Three critical. I mean, part of it is that Firebase completely changed their API, and it's a real hassle to migrate to, to like the new version. It's such a hassle that it would take about as much work to rip Firebase out as it would to update it. So I'm thinking of just ripping it out and replacing it with Planet Scale. But it's not at the point yet where it's too painful. Okay, so now, um, did I do it? Oh wait, no I didn't. I almost did. I need this in squares. I just love this music.
Howdy, Nex. How's it going? Welcome back. It's another day on... Do I think Dream? Who is Dream? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, just look at that mask. Like, that... That smile right there? Like, who can say no to that smile? What a great smile. <laughs> who is this? <laughs> oh, he revealed his face. I don't know who the heck this person is. So much hype. Who is this person? Why would I know this person? The high I'm- oh, okay, fine. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously he's- okay. Anyhow. Eighteen million views. Why is so many? What the heck? That's ridiculous. I'm not gonna fangirl over someone though. Okay. So I think that's what I want. It's just a conversion thing in the bobber. Who doesn't know Dream? Well, I'm just at Why would I know Dream? A fake face reveal? Oh yeah, he probably just used like... Uh, stable diffusion, you know, for the whole thing. Oh my goodness. Not you too, beef. Not you too. A weird. No, Nex. I'm just old. Like, the people that, like, if, if you told me, like, Asmongold did a face reveal or something, or, like, um, uh, the guy with the cups. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. But, like, those are the people that I, you know, at like, I actually watch. Okay, so now we have the moves, and we just do this. Instead of passing in results, pass in moves. What am I doing? We're cleaning up checkers so that whenever you make multiple jumps, you'll actually see the jumps. The new Black Panther trailer? No, I haven't. Does it look good? Nice one, Core. Nice one. Animation? Yeah. But the animation will only occur on the enemy if the enemy does multiple jumps. Okay, that's a bit weird at the end there. Because it doesn't show the animation because the piece actually changes.
Do I know Black Panther? Yes, I'm familiar. Alright, so all I have to do... Uh, I'm playing against a bot right now, not live. Do I know Tom and Jerry? Heck yeah! Who doesn't know Tom and Jerry? Okay, so I just have to set this up so that I can do multiple jumps. Or have the enemy do multiple jumps. There we go. Okay, that didn't quite work. Why didn't that work? That should have worked. Hmm. Doesn't know Tom and Jerry. Oh, gee. To be fair, though, it's that's a really old... It worked, but it was super fast. Okay, we'll slow it down. Okay, let me try this then. The Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? Wait, there was a Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? I love Dungeons and Dragons. Like, one of the things I like so much about it, or there's two things. I like the RNG, and I like the low numbers. It's very important that the numbers are low, because in a lot of games, the numbers get ridiculous. Like, you have 500,000 HP, and you do 200,000 every time you cast a fireball or something. That's ridiculous. But I much prefer the really small numbers, like for old school RuneScape, they do it great. 99 max HP. The numbers are really small, and it's easy to understand those small numbers, because you can easily see like, oh, if I do 20 damage or 30 damage, wow, the 30 is, you know, 50% more. That's a big increase. But if you see a number for like 20 million and then it's 30 million, it's too many numbers. Like MapleStory suffers from this a lot, where you can get like a damage skin in MapleStory where it'll shorten the number back to something semi-readable. But I, I prefer the small numbers. I, I think it's just much nicer. You're the Inspector Gadget. All right. I, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Maple Story 2? Oh, yeah. The problem with Maple Story 2 is just that they, they made you skip all of the, the good content. The leveling process? Well, that was the cool part and they just have you skip over the whole game. I don't know why they did that, but that kind of ruined it. Because you get to the max level in like two days, and now you're out of content because there was nothing to do at the max level. Okay, let's try that. There we go! We got it! It works! So, that might be, um... I wonder how that'll work. If it, the jump is, like, ginormous. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, it works! Heck yeah! We got it working. What do you think of this theme? Vim Dogren? Let's see. Hmm. 
not bad. Um, I'd prefer if the numbers were more saturated. Like these are a little too um, pastel for me. August, howdy. Long time no see, heck yeah. Oh, you missed me over the weekend. I was playing Runelight. I was uh, fishing, Karen Bon. It's okay, you didn't miss much. But I did get to 81 fishing. I fished a bunch of rock tails uh, because I'm trying to do like the this one quest or whatever. Well, accidentally AFK. Oh my goodness. Congrats on 99 ranged. An IRL fishing stream? Well, I mean, as IRL as RuneScape is. But no, I don't, I don't bot or anything. It's all me. Because it's, I don't know, it kind of ruins the fun with the botting. What is RuneScape? This is RuneScape. So there's two RuneScapes. There's RuneScape and then there's like not RuneScape. So this is RuneScape, right? When people talk about RuneScape, that's what this is. And then there's this thing. Uh, what is this? Why did it take me here? Nope. Okay. Hold on. Take me to the site. There. Now this is not RuneScape. This is like a different game. I don't know what this is anymore. This is RuneScape. That's wild. Yeah, exactly, August. That's Wildscape. Why is it called RuneScape? Um, because it's two words. It's run, escape. Uh, they're trying to tell you to run away from it as fast as possible, or it will ruin your life. And that is why it's called RuneScape. No, it's because there's like runes or something and and combat or something. Did I ever watch the guild? I think I watched a little bit of it, Beef. Is it a game from the 70s? Surprisingly, no. It's a game from the 90s. Or early aughts, I think. I don't remember how old it is. That's been a long time. Early 2000s? Probably early 2000s. And what's the time now? Uh, it's commit time. It's time to commit to the to the repo. Alright, I'm not actually going to make this change. That's a bit of a silly change. A commitment phobe, meaning you don't like to do commits. Fair enough. Commits can be scary. Now you get like a merge request and then, oh no. Oh, the real time. Oh, 7.30 a.m. Is checkers good enough? There's still the odd thing at the very end where it just jumps. And that feels weird. Can I improve it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I could probably improve it. I 
Yeah, exactly, August. That's exactly right. If that happens, then um, go buy a lottery ticket. Well, don't actually do that, because that's a waste of money. Just never commit? Oh, man. That's like back in the day, before we used versioning systems. Clicking a button to commit? It's more likely than you think. Not all of us are Vim gods next. Some of us just want to get code done. Not a Vim god, says the person who probably doesn't even own a mouse. You get a profile description. This is really cool. I like this. TypeScript, Python, Rust, Go. See, you got Rust and Go in there, Nex. That's too performant. That's too fast. Also, nice commit. Nice number. That's a ridiculous number of contributions. It's at the left. Terminal. You live in the terminal. Oh man. Yeah, I'm not that pro. I only use the terminal. I don't live in it. Oh, slow Vim user. That, that's, you know, just still you got Vim user right there. Vim user. Alright, so what I want to do is figure out this promotion thing in the buffer. How does that even work? Oh yeah, this is how it works. When can we change the playlist? Good question, Nex. Good question. I need to figure out what I can actually change it to without DMCAs. We'll change it up sometime. Just play DMCA music. Who cares? I would prefer if my VODs don't get muted. But that's what we need beef, for sure. We'll get it some sometime. Probably relatively soon in the next few years. Like we already kind of have it. It's just not super amazing yet. But yeah, I know what you mean, Max. Like I know all the songs now, pretty much. Okay, let's see. Board. Where is the thing that happens where it changes and gets deleted immediately? I wonder if it's this. It's this thing. Morning, Matt. Thanks, Core. Yeah, we'll do that. Sounds good.
just try to keep the DMC out of it, DMC out of it, and then um, I'll play it. I think that's one of my biggest issues is that I try to follow the rules a lot, and then you've got other creators who'll you know they'll like multi-stream or they'll do DMC stuff, um, and they can probably grow more as a result of it, but I'm too scared. I like to follow the rules. Hi computer. Yeah, that's me. I'm the kind of person who doesn't even like to jaywalk. I like to walk on the, like the crossing. Penetrating networks is absolutely out of the question, Beef. Could you- like, there's no way I would do that. What's this one? What? You can no longer be fine in California for jaywalking. Wait, it's a derogatory term? Based on what? What? Oh, I don't go outside. This is me. You're offended. I'm so sorry, Beef. I didn't know it was offensive. Probably offensive to all the people who identify as the letter J. Oh goodness, thank you so much, Barty. I appreciate the raid. Yeah, give a shout out to Barty. Shout out, Barty. No. Okay, hope I did that right. Oh yeah, welcome. And howdy, huge raid. Yeah, thank you so much. Barty's been playing Foony and like I remember you played uh, Foony Flippers I think. I think you're part of like Evan's crew or something? Could be a little bit wrong on that. But yeah, thank you so much and welcome. Okay. And let me know if you find any bugs or whatever in Foony. Oh, your own crew? Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I appreciate all y'all. Okay, Entity Order has changed. Remove all that. Okay, so... Let's try to make it so that I can experience this bug. What I'm trying to do right now is um, have the opponent get a piece to King. Okay, here we go. Am I from Texas? Yes, Nex. However, did you know? Keep the fitness stream popping? Absolutely, Beef. Hi, Liam. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. I do this move here. Okay. Any day now. I am going to lose before I actually get to experience this bug. There it is, right there. Entity order has changed. This is what I was looking for. Mm 
Now the question is, is this actually what I want? It just says the piece shadow. You practice mentalism, that's how you know that I'm from Texas. Nothing to do with the y'all and the... I'm from Texas, y'all. Couldn't possibly be that. The cow at the cattle? No, I don't actually live in Texas currently. Oh, I bet it's this thing. Old children is offset by one because... That's a fantastic description. When am I moving to Austin? If I had a reason to, I would. But right now I like where I am now because uh, the weather's fantastic and I live close to some friends. Isn't Cali expensive? It is expensive. Um, but I also don't live there, so... But where I do live is expensive as well. All children's offset by one because I'm not sure why. I think because the zeroth index is the is image itself. Electron. Yeah, so you've got protons. Neutrons and electrons. Electrons are the ones with a negative charge on the atom, and there's, they kind of live in like this cloud. You can't really pinpoint it where an electron is, and they have different spins, right? So if you've heard of SPDIF, there's this thing on the periodic table of elements, and it kind of explains how many electrons each of the elements have. So like. Uh, you know, something along like the lines of like this has got like a one or something and like the like S1. Uh, oh, like the language. Oh, you mean like the the wrapper. So, yeah, it's like a thing that can take a single page app or something and turn it into a desktop application by bundling a browser inside of it. I took down my FF poster. I did not take it down, Billy. Um, there's this thing called gravity. And that took the poster down for me. But I'll be putting it back up as soon as I can. Uh, yeah, so I haven't actually used Electron, but we will be using Electron at some point for Funi. Unless there's a way to remember. Like, with the periodic table of elements, there is a way to remember. Um... You have like this section here. You've got this section over here ish or something. And you have a section over here. And then this like slots in somewhere. I, I forget exactly. But it starts with like your S and then you got like the P. I don't remember exactly. It's been too long. A displate sponsor? That would be cool, August. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Steak sponsorship. Next, we're not allowed to do that anymore on Twitch, I don't think. I think Gamba streams are banned. But even if they weren't, it's not something that I'd ever want to do. Because I'm not in the business of... of Gamba. See, like, when I do that, I almost want to see the piece move. 
but I only want to see it happen if I do multiple moves. <laughs> Columbus Day, wait, there's a Columbus Day? That's amazing. Wait, hold on, did I miss something? Oh, when I started explaining physics? Yeah, Kram, well, I mean, it was ambiguous, you know, you don't know which electron. Are you calmly playing dynamite? Appreciate it, Core. I could show a brief shadow arrow. Hmm. Oh, you mean like if I hover over a piece like this, then have like an arrow that points all of them to all of the different moves? That would require me to have an arrow. I think I'd be okay doing it, if and only if. Oh gosh. Yeah, see like right there that jump when it becomes a king? I've got to fix that. I feel like it would be this part here. You finish these projects? Well, yeah, you know, as finished as it is for now. So the open state, so then it does this PDN, so it's coming through here. It's rolling forward with the new moves, and then it's killing update board at the very end. So it counts the pieces that need to be on the board. And which have changed that no longer exist. So I think it's coming through here on the update board and it's saying this piece doesn't exist. Okay, how about this? That's a lot. Build. Build a piece. Like a bear, but a piece. We were the greatest team on earth. We could solve a million problems. Did I go to the salon? I did. How'd you know? Hi, Zen. All right, so that's perfect. Now it doesn't do the PDN thing. This is like such a slow way of getting gold on Fumi. Uh oh, I lost. Oh no. My skin is glowing? Oh no, that's bad. That means sun. I actually had a lot of fun. So when I went to the salon, 
I brought my my little I, I want to call it a Game Boy, but it's not a Game Boy. I brought my Steam Deck with me and I was playing all sorts of stuff. Ah, oh, that's so much better. Well, it's kind of better. It, the pieces delete immediately, but it's acceptable, I guess. I got my Steam Deck? Yeah, I got my Steam Deck! See? Steam Deck. This thing. Well, what did I play? I played Final Fantasy X. And, um... Like, this is too cool. It's got, like, an actual OS. And you can, like move around like that. You can also use like this to move the little cursor. Um, but I like it a lot because there's this emu deck thing you can get for it. And um, this is basically like a handheld everything. It's a handheld everything. Which is what makes it so cool. Should it be touchscreen? It is. Yeah, so we also got like a bunch of like buttons and stuff. Do you need a wireless connection for internet to play Steam games? No. But I was playing a little bit of Final Fantasy X, 2 HD, and I was also playing Secrets of Grindia. Yeah, I mean like, this is this is awesome. You know, like this makes me really happy. You can see I played a little bit of this. Uh, the display is fine. I wish it was full because like it's kind of got this border around it, right? Like you can see there's a border around the black stuff. Would be nice if that was gone. But I'm very happy with it. And it's also got like cloud saves. So I can pick up where I left off from my PC, which is very nice. Would be better if it was OLED? Oh yeah, I mean like the display is not amazing. What's the objective to today? To get checkers a little bit more polished and then I have a few to-dos. Um, really I don't have very many to-dos on the list. Just detection of browsers and telling them if any uses the latest browser tech you need to update because we got our first criticism on crazy games. Somebody had an OS from like five years ago and they were shocked that Fooney didn't work for them because their Chrome version was like 60 something, which is kind of ridiculous, but uh, I guess it would be nice if, if they didn't downvote us. Yeah, so they, they were on for half a minute. And they said, it doesn't load, and when I want to play the game, it just stays gray. I think it is a ripoff. And they're using Chrome version 63. Connection type is 4G. North America. So, I guess they have like a really ancient Chrome app on their phone. Are we encourage them to upgrade for security reason? Mosaic browser? What the heck is that? I don't think it was this old. I don't think it was quite this old. And that was like Chrome version 63. Uh, but... Yeah, it's just ancient. The Arc browser? What is this? And what is that? What? This is a web browser. Yeah, this looks like a web browser.
so Arc is a brown okay. So what's the di like why would I use this? It still hasn't told me anything. Why would I use this if it doesn't tell me what it is? It's hard to get excited for something when I don't know anything about it. It's a browser? All right. Great, you know, like, Safari is a browser, but you don't see people going out of their way to install Safari. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not psyched about it because I don't know anything about it. side project videos on the second one? Uh, probably keep them all in the same one, Dante. Oh, you mean like the second Twitch channel? Because the second Twitch channel is not an affiliate, it's not a partner, meaning that there's no restriction on multi-streams. You need some help? All right, what do you need help with? What is Ark and why should I care? Yeah, this, this should be like on the site. Uh, okay, so the, apparently a great UI, but tab and window management. Okay. But I don't get it. I don't know. I need like a picture. Nobody's gotten a picture. Okay, you plan on doing the entire OS computer science course. So, I don't do courses, okay? I don't. I just don't. Um, I learn the bare basics. You know, I learned about like for loops, if statements, functions, classes maybe. Just real simple things. Just enough to build what I want to build. And then I build the thing. As I build the thing, I learn more because there's plenty of stuff I didn't learn that I'll have to learn. I make something cool, I make adjustments to it, and I move on. I just make lots and lots of projects. Um, but I do know people who went through boot camps and stuff like that, and they're with like a, a lot of like-minded people, you know, and they're able to land a job after that. But, I don't know, I just, I build things. That's what I do. As boring as the usual weekdays are, uh, it depends on you, Dante. Like for me, on the weekends, I like to build cool stuff or play games or whatever. So they're usually not boring. I showed you an app you built? Yeah, that's, that lets, like, if I see someone who has built something cool using like a decent technology like React or something, it's an easy hire. Because you can look at it and you can immediately see where they're at, especially if it's open source. You just look at the code, you can be like, okay, they don't understand keeping things private or they don't understand um, commenting the code or they don't understand testing or they don't understand like a lot of stuff or they understand lots of things there's this, this code looks fantastic let's hire them immediately i did go to college and it helped like but i didn't graduate Okay. Um, build a piece. 
Oh right, that's what I was doing. That's why I was playing checkers. Did I drop out of CS yet? Yep. yep. Didn't need to get the degree anymore. Plus, I ran out of money. Okay, right there. Build a piece. Like that's what happened. B8, K8, K dub. B8. Okay, so that's build a piece. That's why it's failing. Right here. And then it's adding this entity and removing the old one. Okay. And that's because it's updating board. And because I didn't change the location of it until it reaches the end. Hmm. Okay, bear back one sec. We used to glow brighter than a billion souls, burning in the night, eternal. And you stole our stars, but they crushed my heart. And the universe went cold. Now I float alone. I float. It's winter now, the chill is cutting through my bones, the black has swallowed the light, and love is suddenly stone, when you sold our stars, but it crushed my heart. All right, let's see. The Chrome users, there might be less Chrome users in a year. It depends what they do with the um, the ad blocking. Okay, so what exactly is changing here? Types to squares. So why then?
Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it adds new pieces. RIP Stadia users? Yeah. So, when Stadia came out, I had a friend who, they got a Stadia, but for me, I didn't. And the reason I didn't is because Google doesn't have a great track record. So, I was like, I don't trust Google's Stadia to be around for a long time. What do I do if I pay for a game and then it stops existing? So, I just, I never got into it. Google refunded everybody? Really? I mean, that's pretty good, actually. All purchases to be refunded? Goodness. That's actually pretty good. But that's a, a big loss. What is partner when? So, I've already applied for a Twitch partner. I applied a while back, and I haven't heard anything. And TwitchCon is coming up very, very soon. So that's partner win, right here. In review. It's been in review for quite a while. Um, we'll see. Hopefully it happens within the next three days. I'll be at TwitchCon? Yep. I'm going to TwitchCon. Do I do this for a living? Well, I do it for kind of a living, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to TwitchCon, so if you're there, then, you know, maybe. Okay, so build a piece. So it comes through here, types to squares. And types to squares, how does this get built up? Based on new squares. Okay, which are the same which have changed and no longer exist? Okay, so it counts all the pieces, so that types to squares has every piece. <laughs> you said no, 68? Oh goodness. does this work? So it retrieves the whole board. The piece exists. So the color, the type, so this would be like a white and then this would be like king or pawn or something. So it pushes the position, the square. And now it's iterating over all of the entities that exist. Oh, and then this is all the squares that are new. So then it updates this to whatever the new squares is. I see. A 
That's a little confusing. It would have been nice if this was like a separate list. What are we doing right now, Jumpy? I'm uh, fixing a bug where when a piece becomes king, it doesn't animate. It just like immediately jumps there. Howdy, GPEM. Just fixing a bug in checkers real fast. After this, we can do the configuration, and then I think checkers will be pretty much done. The cowgirl is howdy. Oh, man. You know, back when I lived in California, nobody believed I actually lived in Texas. It was like a running gag that I wasn't actually from Texas. I see. The okay, so... It's basing it on the squares. Oh, right, because the piece type changes. So there's a delta between what the board is saying and what the, um, the piece entity components piece type is. Okay. So that means I need to update this thing. If other not is equal to square. So it's just comparing the square of the piece at the color and the shorthand. So I need to make sure color, shorthand, and square are the same. The Bay Area because of the food? Yeah, yeah. The Bay Area has fantastic food. Seattle also has really good food too. Okay, I understand how this works now. Wait a minute, these squares hasn't changed, so this piece is bad and has to be removed. That's okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because that means that the square doesn't exist. Alright, we'll just do this. Redmond is really nice. I like it so much there.
No. That was so close. I agree with that, Matt. The DFW area does have some pretty decent food. Although there was this one time, like, don't get sushi in Dallas, or at least at certain places. Because there's this one time I ordered um, omakase, which basically is like the what the chef kind of like, they'll curate like different sushis and stuff for you. And you don't have to choose, it's just like they'll bring out like a small plate of sushi and then another one and another one. Um, but the place I went to, they brought me a bowl with just like the fish on top and the rice on the bottom. And that was the omakase. So I don't understand what it was, but it was not an omakase. <laughs> Okay. The very last piece right here. Build a piece, removing piece, B M A one. Wait, B M at A one. Oh, the shorthand is wrong. There we go. Fixed it. So this here doesn't update the shorthand properly. From two. Okay, so what do we have here on this two? There should be something or other about like an engine. If not result, okay, so this result here. From and to. That's not enough information. That's enough information right there. So it says move. But the thing about the move piece is it also needs to update its shorthand. Playing checkers? Sounds good. 68. FedEx. Oh, that's fun. Oh, little thanks, Dope. I appreciate it. Move piece to a new location. And that updates the shorthand right there, which ensures that it works. So that's how it's currently working. Okay, easy fix. So when I do this move here, I have to pass in the shorthand if there was actually a promotion. Yeah, this set piece, I need to return this.
Is it a public playlist? It's, uh, kinda. It's this thing. It's the EDM and Friends station, and then I just, like, upvote and downvote. It's pretty decent. It would be nice to have some different songs every once in a while, though. Google Game Snacks? I'm not sure what that is. Bite-sized games? Kinda. What on earth is this? I see. Uh, it's kinda like this, except all of the games are multiplayer. I don't know if these are multiplayer. Oh gosh, that was loud. Sorry about that. Uh, I... okay, what? Oh, I see. You're playing it the opposite way. This is kind of like reverse... Well, whatchamacallit. This, um... game I used to play. Back in Waddle K? In World of Warcraft? There was a game, uh, Peggle or something. And the whole point of playing WoW was that you'd play it with this add-on so you could play Peggle so that you weren't playing WoW. You did it like while waiting or whatever. I kind of get it. Yeah, this is kind of neat. But not quite the same as Fooney because Fooney is just all multiplayer stuff. So it's more like OMG Pop or something. Area 120. Didn't Google remove Area 120 or something? I thought there was like, they decided not to do it anymore. I think I prefer Peggle to this. But this is pretty cool. You know, like stack what is this one? Oh, this is really neat. So you just use this for like all of your receipts and stuff, I guess. That's actually pretty great. Still haven't arrived. Oh no, Core. That's awful. Alright, so I just need peace type. Simple as that. There we go, now we have a shorthand. Five minutes down, okay, alright, Zen. It was buzzing. Alright, I'm now standing. Add attention. All right. Buzzing. Yeah, that's like uh, my microphone picks up the buzz.
All right, so how do I do this? Something or other. Oh, right, right, right. That's the whole thing. I was up here, and then we were doing something with like shorthand. Yeah, that's crazy to me, Sub. One and a half million visits a month and not enough to keep going? That's plenty for multiple engineers to get, like, full salary. But, yeah, Google scale, it's probably, it's probably gonna get sunset. So I want to get peace, I guess? What if I do this instead? Yeah, I miss a few Google project products back back in the day they got sunset. You know, they also had like um blogger that used to be a thing kind of cool. And then Blogger got shut down, or I guess, no, it didn't get shut down. All this thing still exists, wow. But it kind of got overshadowed with, with uh, Medium or whatever. All right, so we'll do that, and now I need to do something here. If it is promotion, shorthand, Google, okay. Google Plus? Oh, man, I remember that. Yeah, one and a half million views a month. That's actually really, really, really good. All right, there we go, and it's done. So we're just passing shorthand and carry it along on this thing my bobber I say it's generally good practice to describe well, Zokan, I find that it's useful to write comments that are useful. I know, useful comments, what a shocker. But yeah, that's, I find that helpful. Why am I calling this engine instead of shorthand? Uh, the formatting here is all messed up. This might be a little less messed up here. Yeah, that looks better. Am I 6 plus in height? I am at least 6 inches in height. That's right. Um, in fact, I'm... I think I'm closer to about 71 inches. Yeah. Hi, Shiraz. How am I? I'm doing pretty good. 
giant from your angle? Yeah, like if I do this, like... Ugh, now I look super tall. I'm standing on my tippy toes. Okay. And then we just return result, and it should be good. We have shorthand. Alright, the reason I did all that... is because it's not what I need. I need a little bit more. Not enough info, is it? I think what I want is here. It's probably enough just to fake it. I can probably just do this. Wait a minute, but this will be... No, that's not gonna work. Yeah, cause that's not good enough. I need to do a little bit more here. Is promotion. Oh, this doesn't quite work though because in some games of draughts, it's not a promotion if they jump to the end and they jump back. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like, don't ask personal questions like that. That's just kind of... It's a bit odd. Setting or standing? I am standing. You can tell I'm standing because there's no chair behind me. See? No chair. You can also tell because if I do this, it could be a stool. See, like, if I'm standing, I can do this. I can just go, like... Uh-huh. 
height adjustable stool. No, those are called legs. Most people have them. See, I got some. They're like over here. Okay, what I want to do for here is short shorthand equal. You want it like that, right? Like you filter it, you map it, so it's got a shorthand. No, it's not happy. Oh, right, because shorthand isn't the right thing. It's missing. That doesn't make any sense because I map it right here. So that it has short hands. So let's say filter, map it, sort it. Hi blades, a fancy desk. It's it's alright, you know, it's a desk. It goes up and down. It's, you know, it folds stuff, like most desks do. Types returned by pop are incompatible. Piece move or undefined. It's because it's undefined. Wait, what? Did I dye my hair? I did. That's right, my hair is now a different color. I could do this. I see. Okay, I understand what's going on now. And this type is not getting the type. Very odd. Oh, that's why. I get it now. That's because this is a list of moves. My hair color is red. Okay. Ashore. Uh, um, never seen that kind of color blind list before, but oh, my hair color is is yellow. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just pure yellow. Totally, totally just completely yellow. So I'll make a copy of Chain and then I'll map it so that Move also has short hands. Dang it, purple for TwitchCon. Oh, purple for TwitchCon. What a great idea. That's how you get partner. Oh man, I should have done that. They would have had to make me partner. They'd have no choice. Your hands would be tied. Howdy, Extenda.
Okay, well, so we'll start off with this, and then um, we'll adjust it as needed. So that's almost what I want, except that for each of the moves, okay. Okay, why is it not happy with that? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, because we still have to include the shorthand. The secret of being a partner? Yeah, this is the part that they don't tell you about. Okay, so for each change, right over it and include the type of of the chain. Okay, so I think that's what we need. I could use that information over here. So what makes it a promotion? Just simple enough. the rest the same, but it's a bit odd that I'm doing the calculation twice. Well, I guess it's okay. Would be nice if I didn't need to include all this, though. care for. Alright, so now that that's done, we have shorthand. Back to Finney today? Yep. We'll be back on the side project on the weekends. Well, un unless it falls on TwitchCon. It completely falls on TwitchCon. Oh, gee. We'll see how that goes.
Okay, so now we have moves. Which includes the short hands. So now we just have to do the same thing that checkers or chess does. Which is this thing. Okay. Will I be attending TwitchCon? Yeah, I'll be there. Well, it would be really, really cool to meet up with everyone else, you know, like Primogen and Trash and and everyone else who... Yeah. It would be really cool. I don't know who else is going. I heard Theo is going. Uh, that's all I know. Acorn vlog? That would be cool, August. Um, we'll see. I have very limited internet on my phone. Because I don't use a phone very much. Alright, so, all I have to do is get the enemy to take all my pieces and become king. That's a little odd that it deletes them both immediately. Do I have a YouTube? I do! Okay, so we're looking at this piece here. As soon as it moves down, I'm hoping that there's a nice animation for it because that was like the whole point of all the stuff I just did. And it works! Nice! Okay. And if I try it again. Come on, take another piece down. Yes, that's, that's perfect. That's exactly the animation I was going for. Okay, let's remove some of those weird console logs, and I think we're done. The next step is to add some extra configuration options so that you can play all the different types of drops. When my code works well, yeah, it's a nice feeling. Part of why I like coding so much, I think, because you can see your creations come to life, and just a lot of fun.
Okay. So now let's improve what Tony looks like. How did he get it to double? Uh, it's using like a container and so it throws an extra entity onto it for that. Uh, you can see the implementation of it in the um, checkerboard right here. Get path to peace. Well, not that one. Uh, get peace children. This right here. This gets called. So this is what does it for the king piece. You can see like it passes in a few pieces of information. It tells me what the piece set is. So this is like, you know, use the cookie piece, use the black piece, use the white piece, use the red piece, use the gamba piece, whatever. And then this shorthand is like whether it's a man, which is like the single one, or a king, which is the double stack. And then just the color of the team. And based on that information, this returns what it needs to look like. So there's like a shadow. This is what gives it that slight shadow. It's just kind of just an image. It's not a real shadow. And then there's also this part. Uh, somewhere. This thing. This transform. So this is what, or I guess like both of this, is what gives it that like extra stack. What do you think of game engine? Nope. No game engine here. Well, there's phaser, but I don't really use it for as a game engine. Should be able to become a custom username for YouTube? Um, yeah, I should be able to. I might need to reach a certain size first. Custom username YouTube. Let me see. One hundred or more subs. Oh, I think we have that. Okay, let's try it. So, how do I do this? Sign into YouTube. Select customize basic info. Make sure I don't leak anything here. Oh wow, look at that, the numbers are going up. Okay, so I go to customization. And then I guess branding maybe? Oh, basic info. Channel name, channel Earl. So do I just set custom Earl? Unavailable. While we update our system. How long is it gonna take? Check back in the next few weeks. What? What kind of downtime is this? Uh, I guess, you know, for a small company, small multi-dollar company, they just can't afford it. You know, they have to have the downtime. So, uh, we'll try again later. Things have gone downhill since I left? No, they were going downhill while I was there. That was the reason. Well, not really. It wasn't that important. Alright, so that's done. Alright, let's at least improve the message if uh, JavaScript is disabled. It would be nice to be able to simulate what this is like on an ancient version of Chrome. Like version 65. Because I can't even... I don't know if I can even get that version.
Oof. I see. So you just download an old version. Oh goodness, thank you so much for the raid! Hey, let, me, let me check you out real fast. But yeah, thank you so much. Welcome Raiders. We're working on Funi today. Design games and random stuff. Very cool. A brand designer. That is... Those are skills I definitely don't have. Oh, the stream's going well. Heck yeah. We're working on Funi. So we just finished polishing up checkers. What are fonts? They're the things that show the text in different formats. Design is tough on Twitch? I can imagine. Well, I'm just kind of hard to imagine because, you know, I don't... I don't do design, but... You know, it's, it's, it's what it is. Thank you so much, though. And thank you for the shout-out. I appreciate it. Alright, so I think we can do a deploy. Or what we can do is we can work on configuration. You lost four in a row with a beginner bot? Oh no! Don't worry, if it makes you feel any better, the bots can be a little tricky. I'm guessing you did average. Average is not that easy. So a trick for four in a row is you want to control the middle because it, it lets you get like four in a row. If you don't have any pieces in the middle, the only way you're going to get four in a row is vertically. So just play in the middle. And make sure they don't get too, like, horizontally with empty sides on the left and right. Just make sure you do that and play in the middle and you should be pretty good. The bot is sometimes a bit random. It's on purpose. Of course, if you try against, like, the harder difficulties, then, um, then I get stomped. Like, Grandmaster is really hard. So right here, if they had played over here or over here, I would have had to play to the side. Otherwise, it would be a four in a row, no matter what. Did I do something differently with my hair? Yeah, you know, I woke up today and it was just like this. I mean, I yesterday I went to the salon, but... Yeah, you know, just did, I didn't do anything. And there you go. That's uh, easy four in a row. And that's a lot of people playing right now. Goodness. So I've got that one bug from yesterday, the bug where um, you run over a power-up and it doesn't disappear. That's a hard one. Facetious. I don't even know what that word means. Facetious. Serious issues. Yep, that's that, that's me. Alrighty. All these big words. Look, I'm a simple person. I don't know these fancy words. Howdy, Ismail. Now, I guess it would be like Ishmael, right? Because like... Oh, it's like Moby Dick or whatever. He brought you here? Oh, okay, cool. Also, howdy, Lazarus. Oh, oh, you mean like... I thought you meant like your name was Ishmael. I was like, hey, that's really similar to the person who raided us. One of the only words that has all of the vowels in it out in alphabetical order. I didn't know this. Oh, it does. Oh, 
all right so um do we improve the checkers yeah let's improve checkers config i think that sounds like a, like a plan checkers uh thing here we are Foster check okay yep howdy spinlock howdy Achman. Vainly. All right. So something in here is for the config. There it is. Perfect. So I want to do this the same way that I did chess, I think. I'm doing pretty good. Okay. What kind of options do we have for checkers? I should really call it draughts because it's more than just checkers at this point. So we have must force take. Can't take backwards. Oh, and then we have like all the different versions too. So I was thinking we have a drop down for the version. And then um Okay. So which games have a drop down? Like a selecty drop down. That one doesn't have a selecty one. That one doesn't. Wait, do none of the games have a selecty one? I think none of them do. Yep. All right, cool. We have to make something new. What should you prepare? Hmm. Good question, Akman. I mean, just a stream. Like, that's kind of what I did. I just... I turned my webcam on, and I got OBS set up, and that's it. But, you know, then just as you progress, you'll make adjustments each day. But don't really think about it, just do. Exactly. Don't spend time making it perfect, because it's not going to be perfect. It'll never be perfect. You make it better over many months, many years. I'm still improving my setup. I have so much more to improve. I mean, I just recently got like a, a Steam Deck so I can do stuff like this, right? Which I, I like. It's like, ooh, I pushed the button. And then thing happen. But don't worry about setting everything up. Just just stream. I still have to fix my lighting as well. And I still have to like there's there's a lot. You know, I've gotta fix the background, I've gotta fix the lighting, I've gotta fix the orientation of the table and stuff so that you don't see the door because the door is not great. Um, what was that check? There was like this one online checkers which had a really really nice UI. Best online checkers. And it's none of these. If you don't get to see the door, how you get to watch me anime run out of the room? You can still watch me anime run. Maybe I'll set up like a second webcam just for that. If you only use a laptop, yeah. I mean, the, um, a car was in here just a little while ago talking about how he just uses an M1 MacBook Pro. The pull-up bar? You need the door view? Okay, we'll leave it. If you insist. What is this draughts net? Oh, draughts info. That is not a very good checkers, but I think I've seen this one on, on Crazy Games. This is our competition, by the way. So here's our competition. This is what we're trying to be better than. So you cannot drag and drop 
you have to just click, click. This is the one we're trying to beat. Oh lord. They do one thing nice though, which is they highlight the piece that must move so that you know that you have to like make a move. So we could do that. Don't remove the doors. Don't worry, Jank. I'm not gonna like remove the door. I was just gonna turn the table. Removing the door might be a little like that kind of requires a bit more work. You gotta like take the door and like stick it somewhere, like downstairs. That's too much effort. Well submerged in molasses. I mean, that sounds pretty tasty, but I wouldn't recommend it. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of want to do something where we highlight the piece somehow. Do I have any kind of like highlighting for this? The only game that would have highlighting would probably be um, chess, right? Oh, that would be under images, games, chess. I could do selected. I like the square to gold or something. I could do that. Wait a minute. I have a gold square, I thought. And then we deleted it. In favor of the... Um... Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. All we have to do is grab the old one. So we'll go way back in time. How about way back? Look at that. November of last year. Oh goodness. This is what I was looking for. Perfect. Alright, so now we have a square. So how do we get the square added? Um, I think this will be part of checkerboard. Capture, hover, last move, and move for board. What do I want to call this? Oh, and these are all under chess. Maybe I should move it to chess.
No, I'll keep it in checkers. Transparent VS code. What? No way, Shripti. That's just like not as useful. I don't think. Yeah, all the cool kids have like this uh, background that's like blurry on their their CLI and um, or like their terminal or whatever. And oh, gee. No, thank you. That's what you've got set up on your Neo then? Oh, gee. Glass morphism? Yeah, I mean, it looks really cool. Let's see. Oh, trash is live. I think. Your terminal is the blurred background? Cool. It, I mean, it looks cool, right? Like, it looks neat. But not for me. Okay, so I have to do this thing where we generate images. No, no, no. No, I'm not. I'm staying on August. It's too early. Okay, what do I call this the phone? It's like only move or required move. Okay, so how did we do this last time? I don't remember what we wrote. Because we wrote this code like the other day and then we deleted it all. Um, So let's see, last time we did something where there was like a transform that was occurring if the piece had a valid move. And I believe we had like a method that we called, which was like has move. And by default, it returns true. And then in the checkers checker board, we overrode that method. The way we do this is we just do return this dot engine dot moves, then we pass in the front. And we 
to just check the length of it. If it's greater than zero, then it has to move. That easy. I'm downloading the moon's address. Oh gee. Don't do that, Shpifty. Please. I need the moon. It's important. Howdy, Jota. So this is right next to make move. So make move. I remember this now. And then I wanted to make it where... Okay. This dot pension dots. Turn. Is equal to from dots. I want this. So if not is equal, then we just say, yeah, there's a move there. Don't show. Wait a minute. Oh, right, because this is different. We only want to show a move on the pieces that actually can make a move. And I only want to really alert if the current player, if it's their turn. Set player team. Okay, so I just want to get the player team then. There we go. So now a piece has a move if it's the player's team and there. And I don't really need... I guess I'll do this. Should only return true. If it's the current player's turn. Your interview is next week. Ooh, good luck, Shpupti. And better study. Don't wait until the last minute, which I did a lot in college. I would always wait to the last minute. Because it's there's a, kind of like this idea where the work expands to fill however much time you have. 
right? So if you have very little amount of time, then you're going to get it done really fast. Uh, but then if you have like a massive amount of time, it's just going to take a long time. I'm doing a lot of studying. Well, that's better than most. Okay, so now... Update board. Determine which entities we have that are the same. So it iterates over all that jazz. Add some new ones. Well, how does it know? I don't remember how we did this last time. Wait a minute, I wonder how far back I can use local history here. There we are! Perfect! I love this. Such a great feature. This is what I was looking for. This is how we did it. Update enabled pieces. So we do it at the very end of update board. This piece enabled. Okay. I think that's what I want. see, so it just returns a piece, this piece enabled, instead of has move. Okay, sure. I'm guessing then this was exported, probably. Because it iterates over all of the pieces. So we just do piece this dot is equal to that and really we don't need anything else, we just need this. For your sweet class, your group decided to make a little game for your project. Nice, what kind of game?
How does code work? Um, it depends on the kind of code, really. But the way it works is there will be like a compiler and it will compile the code down into like um, some intermediate format or like more of like a like a machine language or something. And then depending on whether it's a machine language or an intermediate format, uh, it'll get executed in different ways. So if it's like an intermediate format, then it has like a some sort of like interpreter or something, which will run the code. Um, but then if it's like machine code, it just kind of like it gets loaded into memory. Um, a thread will be created. It will be set to like it'll set the EIP register or the instruction pointer to a particular like location. And then that will just start running through, which will then spawn more threads or modify memory or write to files or do whatever else the program needs to do. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, you can kind of see how how code works if you make something in like C++ and then you open up like Cheat Engine or something, or you open up like the debugger and you kind of step through it line by line looking at the disassembly. Um, yeah, it, it's there's it's it's a lot of depth to it. But if you're talking about like how does this code work? Um, lots of, lots of hope, you know, lots of like fingers crossed and just like really hoping that it works. And then sometimes it kind of works. A terrible Stardew Valley? That sounds really cool, Shruti. I'm good, Bolt. I've never heard of this. Compiler Explorer. Oh, this is neat. Oh, this is... I love this. This is fantastic. Yeah, this is actually really good. So, yeah, this is wonderful, actually. So, push RBP, right? And then move... This is kind of setting up, like, the stack of... Forget what it's called... But, um, yeah, it's fantastic. And then, like, okay, so you got move, move some stuff into EAX. I multiply, which I guess it multiply it by itself. And then here it's destroying the stack thing that it did. I forgot what the word is for this. But you see it in, like, every method. Stack frame! That's the one. Yeah, that thing. It's useful. Yeah, when you have like variables and stuff. I mean, you can look at this, so you could be like, ah, well, a lot of that doesn't really need to exist. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could optimize this so that you don't actually need to you set up the stack frame. But I think part of the stack frame setup is that it also helps you, like in a stack trace, it helps you go back to it. I don't remember. But yeah, some of this could be modified so that you don't need RVP and stuff. There's It's like the calling convention of the function or whatever as well. Uh, I think different calling conventions, I think will handle this differently. Yeah, I mean, like, for this particular function, I think you could get by without the stack frame. I think it's simple enough. You could rewrite it. Um, you could make this faster. But this is the way that it typically works, right? And you can do, like, C decal, whatever, and some other stuff, and there's all sorts of weird things. And so if I do like this, and then I call square with foo. Just an example. You can see that this is so cool. I love this thing. 
This is actually amazing. This would have saved me so much time back in the day. And then you can see here part of like what it's doing. And this is interesting. It's moving into EAX, moving to EDI. So this is actually a different calling convention than I'm used to. Because the calling convention I'm used to would do like it would just push the values. So it would like push 42 and it would push something else. And then in the call, it would like pop the value or something. Uh, kind of like this. And then how does it... Oh man, it's been so long. It has been so long. Intel syntax? Yeah, I like Intel syntax. You've got two different syntaxes. Intel and I think it's like AT&T or something. Was, which has like these weird symbols and stuff. This is the one I'm familiar with. I think this is the nicer syntax. So I'm guessing you can also do... Yeah, oh yeah, this is the other syntax. This is, this one's gross. I don't like this one as much. I find this one hard to read. Oh, this is neat too, compiled to binary. So this is like, these are the many chain instructions, you know, like the actual bytes that get written. So this kind of helps you see like how long the different instructions are and how many bytes they take up. Another useful thing would be to know how many cycles each of the things is. Howdy, Elja. Wait, you can choose a language? This is awesome. Compilation failed. Why did it fail? Oh, this seems like... I don't know what TS native is. What about JavaScript? Oh, wait, this is like something totally different then. This is awesome though. If I already code Dungeons and Dragons in any program, what would be my preferred language? TypeScript. Hard to see cycles nowadays, yeah. Yeah, because like pro like CPUs are weird. They can do like parallelization and all sorts of weird things nowadays. This is really cool though. Like, okay, I, I'm saving this. <laughs> this is too useful. This is so useful. I don't quite understand this part. Like this TypeScript thing doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but whatever. Right, so update enabled pieces, it goes through here, update enabled piece. And then this is the part that we don't want to do.
how do I want to do this? What I'm thinking is I just add like an extra entity to each of the pieces and I normally have it hidden and I just display it when it's enabled. And that would work. It basically never hides secrets on the client, ever. Just don't do it, period. It doesn't matter if it's a website or like a compiled application, just don't do it. Assume the client is always bad. And that if you do it, someone will find it eventually. Okay, so then this one would be a little different. Portable, executable on Windows and Elf on Linux? Yeah, that's right. And even, like, there are these things, like, that will pack your code. And you might think that, oh, if you pack your code, it'll be safe. No, it's still not safe. Things like Themida don't protect your code that much. They make it harder, they make it annoying, but it's still possible to reverse engineer stuff that has been through Themida. And if you don't know what Themida is, this is Themida. And basically, it'll use like a VM on parts of your code to slow it down and obfuscate the hell out of it. it it's used by some games and stuff. Modern Assembly has too many instructions. It's too complicated. This is almost like what I want out of Git Indicators. But 
that is only for selecting a piece. So for this one, I want to be required to move, I think. I wonder if I need origin on this thing. Okay, and I think that'll work. I don't think any of the other stuff actually uses this information, because it shouldn't know about it. That's a bit odd, but that should be fine. It might help to not use a magic number and actually use something that means something, but oh well. Okay, so if I'm correct, then every single piece should have like some kind of thing behind it. Hopefully it's aligned. The size is a bit off. Why is the size off? Oh, because it's times 0.85 or whatever. Let's try that. Okay. I mean, the indicator doesn't look amazing, but it's an indicator and it works. And it means something. So that kind of works. It's a bit odd that it's on the piece itself and not on the square, though. Because dragging it like that is weird.
my programming alpha go next? Uh, probably not. But we do need an AI for this thing. Okay, so update enabled piece, it goes through here. So then piece dots. Oh, wait a minute, this entity here. Should have more. I should have children. Okay, let's see if that kind of works. Okay, so it works pretty well, but I think I only want it to show up if um, if it's like a forced jump or something. So I don't want these to show enabled normally. I also don't want it to show up whenever I'm dragging the beast. Okay, so selected piece. We've got image, a square, indicators. Um, how does this work? So build game object selected at X, Y. What does that do? I see how it works now. So this entity, the image of it, gets grabbed, 
treated as a selected piece and then moved around. Hmm. I mean, one option, and then how does the shadow work? Build a piece. That existing entity to parent. Okay, so how does it get the background then? Alright, so then what if I just do this? Alright, this is a bit hacky, but it should work. Oh, wait a minute. I think maybe this one? Oh, where is it? That's nasty looking, but whatever. I don't really care too much. I'm almost done with this. Continue to name the montre tes efforts. 
Okay, so it should almost work now, except that whenever you click, it'll remove the selected thing and then won't re-enable it. So that's almost what I want, except it's a bit funky looking there. What if I remove it after I make the shadow? Does that keep it on the shadow? No, it removes it entirely. Hmm. What I could do is I could copy it to the shadow and that would make it work. That's a bit messy, but mm, it'll work. to add this to is indicators. I'll do this last. I need an X and a Y. Get grid point from square based on the position. Okay. What you already have. Great. Perfect. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Wolf. Four months sub. Wow. Heck yeah. Thank you. I can't believe it's already been four months. Wait a minute, I look different. That's weird. Hmm, I wonder what it could possibly be. Did I do something with my hair? I mean, today I just woke up. And then, you know, the usual. But yesterday I did. Back to 2017. All blonde. Something along those lines. Thanks. Build game object. Okay. What does this return? Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. It's not an entity. 
Alright, that'll do it. Howdy, CWN. Distant colleagues at some point. Very cool. I had no idea. I take it you worked at Google as well or something? Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big place. Alright, let's see here. So now we've added the entity. Interesting ship design. Yeah, what can I say, Wolf? I actually didn't know what I was making at the time. I thought I was just making a rocket ship. And I sure turned into a rocket ship. How's my life since I left Google? Way less stress and I get to work on fun stuff all the time. I love working. It's just a lot of fun. I just like working on my own time. What bug am I fixing? I am making it so that when you're required to move a piece, then there's an indicator that shows that you are required to move a piece. And I'm doing it in a way that's probably not the best. Do I do freelancing to pay bills? No. Um, I just get money from Twitch and from some of my other side ventures that I've done over the, the years. And it's enough to make ends meet, usually. Oh, the dynamite bug. So whenever you run over multiple power-ups in a row, there's an issue with the client's, um, like the optimistic client code, where it's not removing the power-ups properly. And so sometimes the power up will remain and it gets kind of weird. After waiting two years, congrats, Eljo. Oh, geez. No, I, sh I would be the last person you should hire for rocket ships. Have you seen the bugs on Funi? You don't want that on your rocket ship. That would make really spicy rocket ships. Okay, so we added this thing here. Okay, so that's what I was expecting. That's what I was going for. So now it's still there. Perfect. And then if I click multiple times, it disappears. Great. That's totally not what I intended. But okay. Why does it remove it on the second time? I don't know. Oh wait, I do know why. Yeah, easy fix. That's just because I didn't do it up here. You're officially number one in dynamite? I think you are, Jumpy. How many lines of code is Funi? Oh god. All of Funi? Well, let's see. Oh, let you guess? Okay, yeah, go ahead, take a guess. Pull? Okay. Uh. Less than 100? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me do a poll. I mean, most of y'all already know, so this is not a very fair poll. 
but it has changed a little bit. Nipple. How many lines is running? 50k. 80k. Alright, there you go. Including depths? No. Not including depths. Only my own code. I think most of y'all probably know. Uh, did I write something? Yeah, kinda. I modified it, right? Because I wanted more accurate account lines. So it's just a C lock, and then I exclude certain directories, and that's pretty much it. What's Digipop? That's the original name for Phony. Because Phony was based on OMG Pop, but Digipop was too similar to OMG Pop, so we went with Phony. So this entity here, this is what I want. That is a good enormous number of things. I think they really just need children on this thing. this omg pop yeah because uh, it used to be a thing long as heck yeah okay what's well, pretty much settled on on what it is so shall i go ahead and show i probably should have done like a one minute poll well i left because i didn't have enough um freedom so i, I just wanted more freedom i wanted to be able to work from home my own hours i wanted to work a lot but I couldn't get that at Google, so I left. In case I want to come back. I mean, I'm sure there's like teams I could work on and I'd probably really enjoy it. You know, uh, it took two years to build Vinny. Not doing side projects so funny, that was that was painful. Because there are side projects that I, I really like working on. This is a container that contains the thing. Um You just have to do it along with regular work. You have to well You're not allowed to though. Like the thing that you sign you're supposed to let Google know like if you want to do a side project on the weekend. And I tried to get an exception for my one of my side projects and Google was like, nope. And so I was like, oh, okay. Didn't Google have a day for- well, there's this thing where you can do like a 20% project, but that's like company time. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I tried. I tried to get an exception, but they didn't give it to me. Part of also why I left 
but just a little bit. Not the main reason. Well, they can deny you, but you can still build it in your free time. Like, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna, like, bring it to litigation? You know, like, you would probably win in court. Yeah, pretty much. So even though it's a policy. 110k? Yeah, y'all pretty much know how big Fooney is. There you go. 103k. That's just counting the TypeScript. Because like the JSON, this is mostly generated, right? So that doesn't really count. XML, also pretty much generated. This kind of counts. And the YAML, yeah, that kind of counts too. That's the entity of the selected piece. This is a container that contains the... Um... Alright. This is verbose as heck, but oh well. I don't really care too much. This code shouldn't be reused very much. Oh, I'm so sorry, CWM. This does look a piece. Okay, so what do I want to do here? Yes, Mr. Wolf? What is it? Like, if I could, I would just remove the ads you know, from this channel, but I can't. Well, thank you, Mr. Wolf. I appreciate it. Don't torture yourself too much with Python. It can be fun. Well, it is your name, so, you know. Let's look a piece. Uh, what do I want? Is any bolts? If so, one else, zero. All right, let's try that out. It's a little bit funky, but it should be fine. Great, and it works. Only thing is, I don't want it to show up if... Like, I only want it to show if a piece is, like, required to move. So I need to make some changes so that I can figure out when a piece is required to move. I mean, I guess it could be useful in that you know it's your turn, but I still think it's less than ideal. And Python with type pens? Yeah, absolutely. I wish Python had required typing. That would make it better because then your IDE would be able to do, like, a lot more autocompletes. How long ago did I leave Google? About... Oh, gee. Um... What, three years ago now? I think. Yeah, because if I've been on Funny for two years, then I left Google like about three years ago. Yeah, 
Yep, I've been fine. Just working on my own stuff. In the last three years? Well, thanks. Yeah, I'd, I'd be up for it sometime. No, Wolf. Come on now. I'm not... I, will, I think at like one point I was briefly, but I don't, I'm not right now. Thank you, Ashan. Thank you for the gifted sub. And yeah, howdy. Technically, how? Oh, the big boss, yeah. Uh, briefly, because of crypto. Millionaire in lines of code? Oh yeah, you know, a million lines of code eventually. That's how it works. How's it going? Pretty good. Um, checkers is pretty polished now. Something looks new? Yeah, uh, I don't... I don't know if I want all of the pieces to have this. Like, it seems like it's too big of an indicator to show each time. I think if it's just on the jump, it's okay. Or maybe what I could do is I could like reduce the opacity of it so that it's less, it's more subtle. What is the orange indicator? It's a move indicator. Alpha. One thing that really surprised me about Google is that Google has this really great spanner thing, and as like a small company, I wouldn't want to use it because it's annoying to set up. You have to like, I think you've got to like host it yourself or something or spin up some cluster. So like, why would I use that over something like PlanetScale, which is also MySQL-ish and is serverless? It just doesn't make sense. What's Spanner? Spanner is this really cool thing. It came out a few years ago and at Google and you can you can use it, but people don't really use it outside of Google all that much. Uh, Vitesse is cool? Yeah, Vitesse is cool. Because like, if you want to use it, you have to be like big enough to actually make use of it and then you've got to like hire people to... yeah. So, I wouldn't use it for a small company. When you got an elastic block store on AWS? Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, like for running your own, there's a railway app. Or, I mean, I guess, you know, you just, you start a new project, you say, maybe I want Redis or something and then it'll spin up a new instance for you really fast, which is pretty cool. Like, boom, done. And you can connect to it. How do I feel about MV3? 
Um, MV3, what is this? Google MV3. Is, is this the... Oh, Manifest V3. I think it's a really great reason to go to Firefox. Isn't it what Firebase is supposed to be? Kinda, yeah. The problem with Firebase, though, is that it locks you in. There's not a good, like, user journey for getting off of Firebase. So, it's not just that either. It, like, with Firestore, for example, it doesn't really support fancy queries and stuff. It's pretty limited. And the way that you do things like high scores is really odd. So, for something like high scores, I want something that's going to be like a priority queue. Because you want to be able to say like, you know, from a certain position, just get stuff that like runs in the same kind of com time complexity. But with Firestore, if you make each user in a document, the documents are going to be super, super tiny. So whenever you go and read it, that's going to be kind of expensive. And uh, it could just be, I don't know. I've had a lot of issues implementing it in some ways. It gets pricey. Yeah, it gets pricey if you use it improperly. But with planet scale, it actually works relatively nice. And um, it's like super, super crazy fast. The thing that planet scale doesn't have, that Firestore has, and the thing that makes Firestore really nice is the pub sub. So Firestore has pub sub with WebSockets, where you can have a whole bunch of clients as listeners. That's really good. Writing as a client is not really important. It's more reading that's important. But then the real-time database from Firebase doesn't really serve a lot of use cases. Because the use case it's supposed to serve, which is like real-time, so for example like a game or something, um, you can run a single game, a single one, and just max out an entire real-time database. So like Dynamite here, if I do 100 bots, this if I was doing this on a whole real-time database for Firebase, it would just completely collapse. And this is running on like a super, super small instance on Kubernetes, just using like WebSockets. Because the data can be ephemeral. It doesn't have to stick around for long. Um, and so you can use it to your advantage. You know, you could stick it behind Redis. You could do something else. But the thing that's important is broadcasting information to all of the clients. So using the real-time database for movement and the state is just not great. I mean, there's some optimizations you can do, but the problem was if you update like an object or something, every key counts as a write. So if your object contains like a hundred keys, then you're going to easily max out your database. A classic system design problem? I don't know. But, oh no, I got trapped. Hopefully no more ads. But that's the thing that Planet Scale is not great at right now, is PubSub, because it just doesn't support it.
first time trying out Tony? Oh yeah, that's fun. You can play with a lot of players too. Like all of the games on Tony support like 40 to a thousand players. Oh geez, my movement is ridiculous. That's too much speed. How do you do chess with more than two players? Um, oh wow, I won. Wait. That was my first time winning. How? I don't know. That was my- I just- I just won. I just beat the bots. I got an achievement. Um, so if you do chess with more than two players, then it becomes round robin. So you'll just take turns. So it still works. But yeah, that was 100 player dynamite. And then Funo goes up to 100 players as well. So Funo is like another card game that you might have heard of. And this is, yeah, this is Funo, right? You probably know what it's like, but like you probably know what this game is inspired by. It can be interesting doing chess with four players where you have two real people and then you've got two bots so that the bots are on like opposite teams or whatever so then you'll make a move and then next time around it's like some random move by the bot thanks jank i appreciate it yeah i love funo this this game it was like my favorite before dynamite came out But my favorite way of playing Funo is I like to do last one standing with a whole bunch of bots. Bots can be different chess engines. Yeah, so the bots in chess are... Um... Oh, you mean like different difficulties for each bot? That's just kind of annoying from a UX perspective to set up. Who made the graphics? We outsourced them using Dribble. We found someone on Dribble and had them do a lot of the artwork. And then we also outsourced to um, like another company for other images. So like all these little bot icons and stuff were done by like another company. And then my job was implementing everything. So implement the Photoshop as like a website, do the back end, do the front end, D2B stuff all the server stuff. There's a lot. I did have help with setting up Kubernetes so that I can route traffic to individual uh, services on Kubernetes. That was kind of tricky. How many work for Fioni? Uh, me. And then I have a co-founder. And then the rest is just outsourced. But you look at the code and you'll see something where the vast majority of the code was written by me. Is it my work? Yeah. I'm co-founder. So you can you can see the level of difference, right? Like it's ridiculous. Had a little bit of help, you know, over the years, but it's mostly been me. Is my co-founder a technical person? No. Well, the 12 million is unfortunately a bit inflated because of 
couple of commits. Like Kubernetes come to me? What do you mean by that one? And do I publish numbers about Fona users? Yeah. I throw it off every once in a while. So, I mean, I keep the Kubernetes configuration relatively simple. Oh, I see. But, yeah, here's where it's kind of at. So we're at about 2,500 30-day actives, about 700-ish weekly active users, and that's kind of where it's at. How many months to get here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me zoom out. Um, I have kind of spotty analytics because I disabled analytics for a while since I wanted to like I didn't want to use Google Analytics, but then I just I went back to it. So there's like a, a gap where I wasn't using it. Um that does okay, let's do twelve months. So the gra the graph over here, this is without any advertisement. So no ads. No money spent on any ads. This was back before when we were spending money on ads. Um, then when we stopped spending money on ads, it dropped down to about like 50 weekly actives, uh, about 200 or so, and then it like dropped down here to about 150-ish. And then we started ads up again. We got over here. This was with ads. And then this was just growth based off of Twitch and stuff. So growth by Twitch has been far better than ads ever were because this is like these are real users actually using the platform whereas this was just not real usage i'm so sorry cwm i'm so sorry about the ads i'll i'll explain it again real fast Um, yeah, so again, this little part over here, this is the organic, this over here, and this here is ads. Okay, so you can see what the traffic was like with ads, and then as soon as you stop the ads, it just immediately ends, and you're back down to like 50, 70 actives, which is what like the actual numbers were. And one day actives is like single digits, very bad. And then around... Here-ish is when I first started Twitch, and then you like this growth here was because of Twitch. This part where it goes really steep is a bit wrong because I disabled ads briefly for like a week here, so it's more like just this blue part goes up to here. By bot traffic? Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it was odd because they wouldn't ever actually play. Doesn't let you plug missing data? Uh, yeah, that's fine. And then you can see here is our usage by country. Quite a lot of usage in India, actually. Far more than I expected. How long does the session last? I uh, don't know. Good question. Ah, here we are. About three minutes. So I guess it's, it hasn't really changed too much. It's actually, it is up a little bit over the last bit, I guess. Okay, okay, posture check. Hydrate. A lot of India fault. Yeah, probably. 
because of my hours on Twitch. Did I participate in any LPA cycle? I'm not sure what that is. Does it count as a single session if you play two games in a row? I think so. I haven't done anything with the analytics, it's just whatever the default is. launch promo abandoned? Oh. No. No, I was just like a lowly uh, Swee at Google. Just like doing performance stuff on Android. Oh, and that's what it looks like. Okay, I think what I'll do then is set it to disabled. How good does it run on mobile? Pretty darn good. It's very smooth. As long as you have uh, hardware acceleration on, Goni is very smooth. But if you turn off hardware acceleration, then it's not smooth. I mean, thinking of building mobile apps, yeah, actually, there's this really, really easy to use thing. If you use React or something, you can just use Capacitor. This will take you like 30 minutes to an hour to set up. Like, actually, we did it on stream. It was really fast to set up. Very few lines of code actually needed. And um, you don't need to use React Native. So I think a lot of people get hung up on using React Native because they're like, oh, it has to be performant. But I was comparing the performance between stuff that was built natively and stuff that was built using Capacitor. And um, like the benchmarks that I was getting on my phone. When you're using Capacitor, you might spend a little bit more on the GPU, somewhere between like 20-50% more. Um, the performance is still really good, so I wouldn't bother uh, writing all the code twice for um, native. Bonus I Yeah, it is. I have some uh, worse phones, and the performance there is not quite as good, but it's still fine. I'll test more with, like, some really bad phones. Yeah, because, like, you just write the code once. You use TypeScript and you use Electron for desktop apps, you use Capacitor for mobile apps, you're good to go. Flutter? Oh, god, no, not Flutter. The problem with Flutter is, like, the Shadow Dawn. Um... So I considered Flutter, and I think if you're just doing mobile apps, it's probably okay. But if you're trying to take Flutter and export it to the web, it can be a little janky in some weird ways. Um, so like Flutter web app examples. It gets- it's weird. It's basically just like a canvas, and then they have like a couple of other things for some usability or whatever. Uh, samples, this is what I want. Uh, where was the one that I, I like to show? This one! This one's weird. Uh, no, I haven't used Clojure yet. You hate the Electron apps? Why do you hate the Electron apps? Is it because of uh, file size? Because with Tori, the file size is a lot smaller, but because it doesn't bundle the uh, the web app or whatever with it, it just uses what's on, like, you know, built into the OS, then of course it's going to have a smaller file size. Um, but you might end up with some weird edge cases where it, something renders properly on Windows or Linux, but then on a Mac OS, it's running Safari under the hood and it's a terrible experience. So I would rather use Electron. Right, so this here is a bit weird because when you inspect this, 
you're gonna see a shadow root. And then inside of there, you're not going to see much. It's just a canvas. This is the canvas. And everything renders to the canvas. You might also see that like when I press left and right, it's not immediate like it would be if it was just a, like a web thing. There's a small delay. It, and, it, and if I'm holding down left, see that? The cursor doesn't move like it normally should. So there's like weird things with Flutter that really bother me and make it so that I wouldn't want to use this. Like, look at that. Home and end. And like, now I have to press right and left two times. Sometimes it's, it's weird. But here, you can like try this example here and just it just doesn't do what you expect it to. I double click and it doesn't select. You have to, it just doesn't work. A React with capacitor gives you web plus mobile. This is true. But you're typically gonna be deploying without capacitor for the web. How does Finny work on mobile browsers? That works fine, but we're going to do like an actual um, mobile app for it. Still in beta? Yeah. Uh, I, I saw like the new Google Sheets or Google Docs and it worked really, really well. Um, so I was, I was really surprised at just how good that experience was. So it'll be interesting to see how Finny evolves, or sorry, um, Flutter evolves. Um, Google Sheets? Uh, I, meant, I meant Google Docs. I don't know what it uses. I don't think it uses Flutter, but they do something weird where they do like canvas rendering or something. I'm not sure exactly, but it works well there. Whatever it is they're doing. Okay, so the next step is um, a bit nerfed in Firefox. I'm not sure. What does Fooney use on the back end? Yeah, Express. Express and Kubernetes. V1 release. Ooh, nice one, Wolf. I'm looking forward to see it. All right, so over here we want this piece enabled. Yep, my name is AC. We have, I have news. Ooh, what's the news? Kubernetes. Ooh. I wonder what that could be. Good news. Ooh, I like good news. On Django. Oh, like actually work on the library itself? Okay, so how can I know if these moves Require a capture. The framework is up. Nice one. Huge congratulations. That's huge. I mean, typically, like, your first pull request, is it's really not about what it is you're doing. It's more about just getting familiar with making a pull request and getting it in the repo, right? But it's huge. That Like, that's awesome. Well done. Okay. 
Okay, so we get chain of moves. And that's how it works. Oh yeah, I can tell if it's a tick because, um... Oh yeah! Because the from and the to will be different. Because if it's not- oh yeah, I remember this now. So I don't need to make any changes to the back end. I can do this entirely on the front end. So I can do and moves as some where the move is this thing. Turn to you. Oh. It's the player's turn. We have a piece that's let's see. Oh wait, no, I don't want some. I want like none. Is there like a none? I guess that would be a similar to filter or something. Okay. Any that's um that's some um, I think, like in uh. Yeah, it's an odd name, right? Like, well, why is it called some? Not some, yeah. Let's see. Oh, right, yeah, because this move here is um is a square. So then I have to convert it back to the other thing. Okay. returns squares to me, it doesn't return. And I don't want this piece to know about like how to convert between one or the other. I guess I could. Or what I can do as well is have this go to How to learn every game before cutting the rules? Yeah, that's how it works, right? You know, you have to know how Uno works. You have to know how chess works. Well, not really for chess, because chess you can do chess JS. Um, so you can save a lot of time here. But there wasn't a good engine for checkers online, so I had to make my own engine for that. 
paint job. This one was... This was tricky. This one was tricky because I had to learn about like render textures and how to do things properly. Uh, this actually involved me learning a little bit of um, like shader language stuff so that you can do like GPU shaders. Um, so that was interesting. And then, you know, each of these games, they have their own algorithms that you have to, to do. Which one did I enjoy the most? That's a tough one. Um, they all have like their different challenges to them, right? I think Dynamite was really interesting because it was the first real-time game that Funny really had. Uh, like, I've rebuilt the architecture for Funny multiple times, but in order to get Dynamite to work, I had to rip out Firebase real-time database and swap it for Socket.io. So that involved rewriting a lot, like the entire network stack, um, which was easier said than, like, or easier done than said. Um, it wasn't that bad because when I wrote the network stack, I actually wrote to like an adapter. It was kind of like an adapter pattern or whatever. So all I had to do is just change one part of the code and then everything just magically works now with sockets instead. Is this a website or an app? Right now it's a website. It'll eventually be an app. Interfaces are amazing. I think interfaces should basically like, you should code to an interface anytime you're dealing with anything that's like third party. So like uh, if I deal with Firebase, for example, go to an interface or like an adapter, whatever you want to call it, a wrapper, something like that. When I deal with HowlerJS, I do the same. And this is really helpful because I can do all sorts of things. Um, I can maintain like the same like API or whatever for like accessing something or whatever you want to call it. And then I just change how it works in the wrapper and problem solved. Did I make it all by myself? I mean, I write the code. What do I use now instead of Firebase? I still use Firestore and then I use Socket.io for the real-time stuff. Um, most of it is still Firebase. Though I do want to switch to Next.js because I want to use it for um, like the static site generation because it's more useful than like, like for SEO and stuff. Google actually does a really good job of SEO when JavaScript is involved but Bing and other search engines do not. Plus, it'll improve performance, like it'll reduce the amount of time spent rendering. Um, I wrote the code, Lola, not the graphics. Who uses Bing? Not that many, but you know, like DuckDuckGo as well, it, it breaks on. What's the best food at the Google headquarters? Uh, they had really good cookies in San Francisco. Um, I think probably the cookies. <laughs> uh, they had some good chocolate chip cookies. But then like, Decatur.gg. Oh, you're in the SF office? Yeah, that's where I worked. I used to work at 345 Spear Street. DuckDuckGo is Microsoft in disguise. Oh, wow. I'm ranking it on Google? Yeah, like, Boony does not do very good on ranking. W6, I, it's been too long, I don't even remember. Oh, you're right, that was like one of the cafes, I think. I think that was the one that had the cookies. No, we're not working on Dictator today. This is the side project. This is what I do on the weekend. This is my 20% 20, 20 project, I guess you could say. So this is what you get when you use Next.js um, without JavaScript, which it's a nicer experience. It actually shows you stuff. And that's pretty cool, pretty helpful.
Uh, I'm so sorry, Ellie. If you ever try again, best of luck to you. So it's not that you get the server-side rendering. Well, I mean, it's called server-side. Well, I guess you can do both. You can do get server-side props where it is server-side rendered. But that's not why I like Next.js. I like Next.js because of the compile time rendering. So I don't actually like using get server-side props. I try to limit that only to the API. And then I like to have everything else just be like a static page. Because with Next.js, you still, when you first hit that page, you still get a little bit of, yeah, static rendering. That's what I like. That's the part of Next.js that I like. Plus, I also like, um, uh, whatchamacallit, what is this? What is this? That's interesting. I don't know about this. Well, this is a, it looks cool, I guess. Yeah, they can be a, l a lot of luck based. I think I was lucky because whenever I got into Google, it was actually through this bar up view. Um, this thing, this is how I got into Google. Hang out. Oh no. Okay, Wolf. All right, here we go. Yeah, that was me, CWN. I was one of the first candidates or whatever. Yep. You get into a terminal and you have to solve enough puzzles and... Okay, here we go. Than it was before, I think. Like, it doesn't, um. I almost feel like it could maybe do one arm for a little bit. Okay, one arm's hard. You can also do like the reverse ones or whatever, like where you go up. Thanks, Wolf. I wasn't the one who cut it. I 
I appreciate it, Emeritus. Pretend not bored. I don't know what you mean by that one. I actually enjoy this a lot. Thanks, I really appreciate it, Wolf. Okay, so it's forced, um... What do I want to call this thing? It's forced move. Returns true if the move, let's see. Do self taught people have any chance against a degree? Absolutely, Lola. Because I, for example, I never got a degree. And Google was still willing to hire me. It's more about just like, you've got projects or whatever that you've done, you know, like you can do the work, you can pass the interviews, you know, some data, uh, DSA stuff. Right? Data structures and or Yeah, data structures and algorithms or whatever. Oh, I can't see my code editor. So sorry, thank you for that. Do I solve puzzles or algorithms still? Only when I want to get a job. So like if I'm going for interviews or something, then I might spend some time on hacker rank or or elite code or or whatever. change scene yeah thank you but lately i've also really been enjoying these typescript challenges i don't do as many as trash dev does um he's really going through these and like he's rocking it now but these are fun too was i good at dsa when i got hired by by google that was decent you know like you you have to learn some You've got to learn big annotation. You need to understand like how to figure out what you know runtime complexity your code has. Um, and you need to know some simple things like trees and tries and hash maps and sets and lists. Obviously, like you know just the basics. And you need to know like um, binary operations like and or xor shift left shift right. I agree. I 100% because you just don't really use it outside of the interviews and like the interviews are really, really detached. You never used more than the DFS. And I actually used something for um, the filter. So this was interesting. This was pretty algorithmy and data structure. -y. It uses a try to create masks and figure out like where you've got bad words in the code. So this was kind of cool. So you can add words and stuff and it'll filter out just the parts that contain the bad word. Yeah, this was fun. But this ended up using, I don't remember what I used for this. Just, I remember it used something, some something special. And I've done a couple of other things on Fang. Like, you, you end up using a couple different algorithms and stuff, but you learn it when you need it, and then you, you stuck it away and don't worry about it. Want to do the dumb dictionary approach? Because I wanted to add support for all sorts of different characters. So if you try to, like, See so here, for example, character substitutions and stuff. Um, this will go through and remove any of these like special characters, and then 
Um, I also wanted to make sure that it wouldn't filter out good words. So for example, grape, that's a good word. You know, it, it's a tasty fruit, but it contains a word that's not as good. So I actually do uh, have like certain values which are allowed. And then like, there's like a couple different ways that this works. But then also if somebody does like, um, yeah, I, just, I don't know. That works pretty well. Like pretty darn well. How long did it take to create this filter? Oh, I don't know, like half a day. Oh yeah, and then there's like bad words. So this is like your big list of bad words that you add. Um, and then like bad words filter. So for example, like analogy. Um, so the things like this, I think like Casablanca, those are fine but they contain words in them that are not so fine. So by adding this bad words filtery, filter, I can prevent blocking lots of common words. Why it got symphony? Well, all right, symphony, why did, um, why did Twitch catch that, you know? Hydrate? Okay, okay. Libraries for this? I couldn't find anything that was exactly what I wanted. I actually looked initially. I was looking for a library that would do what I wanted, but not sugar water. This tea. Not sugar in there. But okay, we'll do some normal water. Howdy, toast. What would I recommend for self-learning? I would make a project. You know, think about something in your life that would help you. The best thing to do is have a hobby outside of programming that could use better software or something, and then just make that thing for yourself. And it does pretty well. Or you can do something that's already been done before and you can just like remake it or there's there's lots of things you can do somebody recently shared a project like a project ideas on github thing and it had a huge list of app ideas i think it was this so this is pretty good too Let's see, returns true with the move. Review your code. Uh, where's your code? Okay, so here we want to do this to engine dot splits. That's what I'm looking for. So, I think if it is less than two, then 
that's I think if it is equal to one then it's guaranteed it's not a jump, right? Because yeah, that makes sense. And do you need to know a lot of math? No. Though this does vary and depend on which branch of programming you're going into. If you're going into something that is more like a game engine or um, like some sort of physics simulation or something along those lines or something that's very heavy in like machine learning, it might require more math. For machine learning particularly, you're looking at like statistics and stuff, but even then like probably not too much. Um, or if you're doing something that involves like fintech, where you're messing around with um, like stocks and pricing and stuff like that, that can get more statistics-y and require some more math. Um, but if you're doing something that's more like building a website or something that's more like front end -y or something along those lines, you don't really need much math. Gorelio. Uh, let's see. I like how you're using um, actual types here. That's really nice. Docs are nice. Um, I see. So this is how you do enums or whatever in Python. It's been so long since I've done Python. Um, models. Okay, so this is like uh, database models then. Okay, yeah, because you got like foreign keys. So this is kind of like the Python version of um, the Prisma, almost. Class order, let's see. So this is more this is less about Python and this is more about just like how you're doing um, your SQL. Okay, so let's see. Um So customers of foreign key, like, uh, let's see, models.protect. I don't actually know what protect does. SQL on deletes. Protect. Like, I know about, like, set null and... Oh, is this like a... Oh, I see. Prevents you from deleting. Hmm. So what does that mean? So does that mean like if a customer has an order, then the customer cannot be deleted? I don't understand why that would be done. Like, why wouldn't that just be a cascade? Oh, wait, or like a set. No oh, wait, hold on. I guess you still want the order history. Uh, yeah, that's tricky. Because you might be required to have history. Hmm. Yeah. Origin address. Is it ever possible for someone to have an address that's longer than 255? 255 is a good length though, because it's like the max before storing the data becomes more expensive in MySQL. Advice for someone generally trying to become as good as possible? Make a lot of different kinds of programs. So don't limit yourself just to building websites. Don't limit yourself to just building machine learning models. Build something in like lots of different things 
and try to get a very broad understanding of like a lot of different things. You don't have to drill down and become an expert at any one particular thing. Um. I mean, unless you want to be. I mean, like, if you want to be an expert at one particular thing, I think that would be more like if you're being a library maintainer or something. I mean, there's a, there's a lot here. I don't know, I mean, it looks like code to me. It looks fine. I don't really have anything to criticize, but this is also quite different, right? But in general, like at a glance, it looks totally fine. Use, for, oh yeah, yeah. First order ID. Let's see. Oh yeah, uh, else ID equals S1. I mean, this could be shortened, right? So you could shorten this. If not last order, return S1. And then like, this could be unindented. Google doesn't code in Python. Oh uh, yeah, Google uses a lot of Java and Go and C++. Okay, so here, let's see what I want. So, um, this is what I'm going for. Okay. Oh, wait, it's over here. Okay, it's first move. So that's what it wants. And then we just do. And this dot engine dot is first move. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that emeritus, the cyclomatic complexity thing. And there's even plugins for it. Yeah, I don't really bother with this. Although I also don't bother with things like, you know, you must have at least X percent code coverage for your tests. Don't bother with that one either. I have never used calculus uh, in my programming career. Never touched it. Just don't need to. It, it just doesn't help you. I mean, unless like you're doing spaceships or some physics stuff, I guess, but yeah, I've never used anything related to calculus.
Do I use math in my programming? Yeah, sometimes I do. Did you pass? I, mean, I don't know, Wolf. I mean, it's it's more about like, can you pass the interviews and can you get your foot in the door to where they look at your interview and bring you on site? Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So it is forced move, so if, then it's not a forced move. So if the length less than equal to zero... Oh, wait. Well then, if not sum, then it must be a forced move. What do I think about floating point? Well, I can't give you a letter of recommendation, right? Because I don't work there anymore. Oh, functional programming. I think there's been more of a push towards functional programming because of how React does their functional components. Now, if you're doing something with React, then you should definitely be using functional components. If you don't know what a functional component is, all of these are functional components. Um, it's like expert function as uh, as compared to like a class component. Um, now, if you're doing React again, don't use class components. Don't use higher order components. You will add way too much complexity. Just functional components and hooks. That's what you want. However, outside of that, class components are fine. I think a lot of the scary part of class components is when you have an interface for everything when it doesn't need it because there's just a single concrete class that implements some interface. Why? You're just adding extra complexity. Don't do that. So just keep the classes relatively simple. Don't extend it too many layers deep, and it should be fine. But if you're just avoiding classes because classes are scary or something and you're trying to do everything functional, I think that's also a mistake. I think there's a lot of times where class components can reduce complexity. One of those examples, for example, yeah, okay, one of those examples is a game. A game has some kind of a state to it. So whenever I'm doing Funi and you have a whole bunch of different rooms and they all have a game session, that's a great area to have a class because it's kind of like self-contained. It's got like those states and you call these methods. You don't want to... If you were to do it a functional way, you'd be passing around the state to every single function call. And it would kind of balloon the number of parameters you've got to pass around to kind of a silly amount. I mean, I guess you could just treat it like a this pointer and you pass around some context. But still. Use refs to hold the data in fun the functional component? Well, this isn't, um... You also don't need to use refs. It, it depends. There's, there's things you can do. And I agree with Emeritus on this. You know, the code should be correct. Um, don't bother too much with performance, as long as it's got like the right um, runtime complexity. But you know it's bad? Oh, that's okay, Wolf. Uh, right, so it's forced move. You can. Do 
You can write JavaScript in the back end too, Wolf. Yeah, I know what you mean. I used to say that I was backend as well. I mean, I did some like front end stuff, like PHP Laravel, but um, yeah. I, I like the days now for front end. It's you know it's like React, you know. It feels much more back endy. That's great. I mean, heck, I still use some object oriented code in my React. You can break out of doing things functionally in React, and you can do classes and stuff. Like I do that for games. Um, it just, you know, it's fine. You wrote a debounce function in JavaScript? I just do, I do this. This is my debounce in JavaScript. I use Lodash. But yeah, that's cool. enabled. Okay, so it's the player's turn. Forced move. And the piece is able to make a move. Okay, I think that's fair. I'm very happy for you, Wolf. I'm just giving you a hard time. So now, perfect. I actually kind of like the way that works. So it gets like brighter when you select the piece. But I think 0.5 is not enough. Let's try 0.7. That's pretty good, actually. No life reload? No, it's because of phaser. Like, this is inside of a canvas and stuff. Okay, so that's as bright as I want to go. Maybe that's a little too bright. Let's try this, then. You should see the Weekend Project, Emeritus. I love the Weekend Project using the T3 stack and it's just, it's so cool. You don't have to think about, you know, styling your code because you just use prettier and there's just so much. I love it. I love it. I love the side project. Can you get a black spread? Um, hmm, maybe Wolf. The weekend one? Yeah, it is. There we go. I think that's a good uh, amount, a good difference. Yeah, that's perfect. Because now you can see like, oh, I must make a jump. Okay, yeah, that's way more user friendly. Yeah, I like this better. This makes it immediately obvious, and depending on the conf- oh yeah, this is great. 
Having a black bond with a blue spread is weird. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay, we'll add this to the to the list. Add custom spread. Oh, ooh, wait, custom spread. That could be weird because of the way it gets built. Uh, wait, now I can figure out a way. We'll see. How to structure IO socket IO events. The way I like to do it, again, is I like to think of it just like uh, packets. So with like networking, you have an opcode and then some data. So the opcode is kind of like what you would use in like your switch or in your dictionary. I would recommend a dictionary here or a hash map, whatever, which is going to read the opcode. That's going to be like the first little like byte or whatever, or two bytes of your packet. Uh, in this case, it's going to probably be more than that. It'll be whatever your emit thing is. So, for example, if I take a look at call, I'll show you how this works. So, I have a nice, like, types, typed kind of call thing here. It's abstracted away. I just do this on the client, and it will internally either call out via a socket, or if there's not a connection to a socket, just an HTTP request. But I'm not doing lots of fetches all over my code. I just call this and I let this thing handle it. So then comes down in here, goes through all this jazz. Uh, and then it comes here, calls over in the socket. Here's how the socket works. Emit. This is your thing. Your action. That's your opcode. You got an ad? Oh gosh. I'm so sorry for the ad. Um, let me know when it's over, I guess. Do you all get an ad at the same time? I think you do. I think you do. It's over now? Okay. Dynamite character skins? It's coming, Wolf. Give it time. We'll get there. Oh, well. I appreciate you being here, Emeritus. Can learning math help you stand out as a programmer? A crown? What can help you stand out is a really good project. Even better if it's open source and on your GitHub. That will help you stand out. Math? I mean, it doesn't hurt. My socket events. Okay. So, opcodes. Whenever you're dealing with networks, if you look at the way games work or any kind of like networking thing, you have an opcode, this is like a key into a dictionary, which says what the action is. For example, all of these are opcodes. Send message, add friend, add moderator, follow user. They're actions, they're things that you can do. And each of these opcodes has its own data that it goes with it. So whenever you do a call or something, to the server, this is kind of how it works. You have some opcode. That opcode has some data. For example, upload avatar takes an image. Update user status takes a status. Set an email takes an email. Verify takes a user ID and, and some code. Don't have a REST API for each? No. I don't recommend... Um, well, I mean, it, there is a REST API under the hood. But I don't code to the REST API. I code to an interface. And then under the hood, it calls out to the REST API or to the socket, depending on if there's a socket connection. A strongly typed REST API. I do. I have a strongly typed REST API. Um, one thing that works really well, if you start with it, is TRPC. So that's strongly typed REST API. Um, but yeah, so all this call stuff, for example, if I do this call, verify email, it will tell me what I need to provide to it. And if I, like, these are all the different opcodes I have, right? So it works really nice. Am I using generics? Oh, heck yeah, I'm using generics. How do I make it fully type safe? 
Oh. oh, that's tricky. That actually involves some fairly fancy typescript. I would consider this advanced. What framework is this? This isn't part of a framework. I just did some types and made a type safe. Uh, it uses Express, but here's how you do it. Here's the generic. So some type t, which is a key of type of action, right? And so this is an enum, or it doesn't need to be an enum, you could just do a const or whatever. I actually prefer not to use enums in JavaScript because of how they compile. It, it's this weird like function thing. It just ends up being more bytes than if you were to not use an enum. This is exclusive to JavaScript. If you're using C++ or something else, you should be using enums. which says slash send message and slash by item. Um, because it's more decoupled, I don't need to do it that way. Um, like in the back end, it's just slash call and then like action equals whatever or something. Um, this way just helps me keep it decoupled. I'm not writing it specifically for some REST API. Yeah. Anywho. It grabs this uh, key and then it does this thing. So I'll explain this in a sec. Hold on, okay. Let me answer questions first. Uh, you have nothing to do for the next three months. Decision. To learn TypeScript. Okay, Wolf. So three months from now, so that's about January-ish. That's a decent amount of time. Um, tricky when I want to add monitoring. No, that's totally fine. I can add monitoring to any piece of this that I want. Because on the back end, um, I mean like on the front end, everything goes through this one function. Anytime I'm interfacing with a server, it goes through this. That's it. There's nowhere in the code that calls out to the server outside of this function. Are you going to make democracy.gg? Oh no, my competition. Okay, and then on the back end, this is where everything goes. There's this one endpoint slash call, and this is where everything gets handled. It gets handled for sockets or for regular HTTP requests. Everything goes through here. And here's where I can do additional logging based on IP addresses. Um, and then it does this thing, which ends up doing this crawl thing, and here it does some kind of, like, sanitization. Uh, let's see, imagine you want to add 99% SLO. Oh, I don't care too much about SLOs and stuff. Have I ever used gRPC? No. Like, I, th I, I don't even know if I use it at Google. I might have. The whole proto buff thing. But um, I like TRPC a lot, which is different. And I think I have used proto uh, slash stubby before at Google. Stubby, I think I did. Um, but anywho, goes to here, call action. Here's where the action stuff works. So. If it's not like a valid action, that will do like a warning and return false and doesn't actually go through. And then it will validate that all of the data is proper and of a correct type. Because anytime you're doing like a fetch or something, you can't trust the client. You might be expecting a number, but you might get a string. You, or you might expect an integer. You might get a floating point. You might get a negative value. You might get infinity whatever. You might get an object. So you have to do validation and make sure that it's in the format you expect it to be. You might get NAN. Yeah, NAN is a number. When I was in Google, the code is really nice. 
Python first or WebDev, it's really up to you, Lala. It depends if you want to go more for machine learning or more for something else. Um, is NAN considered a number? Yes. Type of NAN is equal to number, I believe. Something that's really surprising though is that the type of uh, null is, a number, is an object, right? So this is a bug in JavaScript. It's been around since like day one or whatever. It's really, it almost caught me, but because I was using TypeScript, it was fine. Yeah, NAN is a number. How is it a bug? Because null is clearly not an object. And if you do type of undefined, it's undefined, right? So you would expect type of null to be null. NAN. Um, it's possible to get not a number in some weird ways. Like this. So that's NAN right there. It, you're converting it to a number, but it's clearly not a number. Thoughts on Flutter? I have explained this before. Just go back in the video. Uh, let's see, did, oh, did I miss anything else? Is Fruity inside a mono repo? Yeah, pretty much. But it's not using turbo repo or anything. How long would I say it takes to be able to program at the level I can now? I'd say about 13 years. But you can code pretty close to this in far less time. I broke a lot of existing sites. This is so sad. This is so sad. I wish this was fixed. Since any object can be null, I mean... It's like, it's legit a bug. Like, legitimately, it's a bug. Am I at a point where I don't follow courses anymore? Zokun, I haven't followed a course. Period. The only course I followed was uh, some college stuff, right? Like, you could argue that was a course. I don't follow courses. When I learn a new language, I don't follow a course. When I learn a new framework, I don't follow a course. If you look back at day one of um, when I started the Zero to Hero for the side project, you can kind of see my approach of like how I began learning. It was mostly just by doing. Um, it was like a lot of trial and error. I would try something and I would slowly build up my mental model and I'm still building up my mental model for the side project. A lot of the time, you might hear me say something like, I wonder what happens if I do this, or like, I expect this to do this. And then when it turns out that it doesn't do that thing, I'm learning. So there's a lot of experimentation that goes on. How do I learn? I experiment. I have a mental model in my head of what I think will happen when I do a thing. And then if it does the thing I expect it to, then I understand like it's validating my mental model. And if it doesn't do the thing I expect it to do, 
then I learned something. For example, count foo equals null. If type of foo is equal to object, like maybe I expect something like this, hello world or not, then I would expect foo dot hello equals this does not or this works. Yay! No bugs here. Console.log two. For example. And you see it's it was wrong. It's broken. And I'm like, well, why is it broken? This is, doesn't make sense. Object is possibly null. That doesn't make sense. I made sure it was an object. And then you'll learn. Oh, type of null is an object. Why would you write that code ever? I actually wrote this code very similar to that um, where I was checking against an object. Uh, well, I can actually show you, I think. Type of or is equal to a type of it should be one of these not that not that no oh, maybe i deleted it i thought it was in the side project i guess not what is this part oh right i was still working on this no it's nothing there Does my project, my project still break until a day? No. Yeah, something like this, you know. Or whatever, I don't know. I'm gonna switch to fleet when it comes out. No, no reason to. If this doesn't let me code fast enough, and I don't have enough like dev velocity, then I'll consider switching. The guy in Cali, he registered the null license plate. That is amazing. I love it. Okay, uh, where was I? Oh, there was doing this. Okay, we explained that. Back to this thing. This piece enabled. I think we got that done. Uh, well, thanks, Rico. I definitely feel real, you know? Like, I, I think I'm real. Gonna have an existential crisis now. Flesh, blood, and bits. That's me. Hydrate? Okay, okay. I can drink water? Yes, this is how. Yeah, and um, I got a visual update. So you make move. Oh, well, thank you. I don't know. I just uh, this is me. This is how I talk. You know, my mom raised me, right? <sighs> Trying to get me to curse for five months. You know, like the second I do that. Someone is going to clip it. I guarantee you.
I guarantee you're not. Oh, I'm hurt. I'm so hurt. All right, let's see. How many gifted subs for me to say? Flobberty gibbets. Um, I don't know. What does my day look like? Uh, well, this is my day. Your favorite programming language is profanity. See, I, I'm personally, I'm not a fan of that one. Like, this programming language here, it's just too hard to code in. Um, the authors really didn't do a good job on making it readable. I mean, sure, you can do comments really nicely in it, but the code itself is really hard to read. Everyone has like 20 years of experience. Well, I am a giga nerd, or at least a super nerd. You know, I'm trying to become a giga nerd. So you just have lots of experience because you're always in front of a, an internet a computer. The name of that programming language again? Uh, yeah, so it's just this one here. Um, it starts with brain. Um, it's kind of hard to pronounce the end of it though, but here you go. Yeah, it, it rhymes with brain luck. Okay, so I think this is good. Um, checkers, show, forest, move, and indicators. So let's go ahead and get a commit in real fast. Am I single? Yeah. I could ask that a few times. Yep. Alrighty. So, let's see. Um. Not hungry, but do I have food? I do have food, yeah. And water. Lots of water. Okay, so let's deploy. I eat bougie meals. I do. Yeah, I get like some special healthy meals. And then I stick it in the microwave because that's how I cook. Let's call it intermittent fasting. That's basically me during, um, oh, pizza, howdy. I, I so want to say like partner win, but yeah, I also don't want to, uh, you know what I mean? Anyways, um, the ploish. Okay, let's do this. Nine more years till you get 10 plus years of experience. That's pretty good. Pizza, you know, keep it up. All right, we're deploying. Oh yeah, the tools today are ridiculously good compared to like what they used to be. Man, I remember back in the day using Sublime and thinking Sublime was really good. And I remember thinking Eclipse was good. Like there was a time where Eclipse was just like mind-blowingly good. It was like state-of-the-art. Eclipse is still good? Wolf. So there's this thing called IntelliJ. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's quite good. Is it zero downtime deploys? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, 
All right, and we're deploying. Tests are passing. Uh, so I didn't use NetBeans. I never used it. I skipped it. Subversion. I used to like Subversion more than Git because in Subversion, every commit had like the commit number that it was. And I liked that. It was like, oh, well, this is commit one. This is commit five. I want to roll back to commit three. Uh, that was nice. But then the merging was not nice. Yeah, SVN had commit numbers instead of a hash. Like, imagine you're on on this, right? And you click on one of these. And you browse files. Imagine if instead of having this giant thing, you would just say you're at 10 or at 5. That was SVN. Code both front end and back end. Yep, I do. And Bitbucket. I think I feel like I might have used that at one point. Yeah, there was a time where GitHub was not just the de facto. There was Bitbucket. There was GitLab. There still is GitLab. I think. Actually, is there still GitLab? Oh yeah, it seems like it still exists. All right, and deployed. Okay, so the next step is we've got to fix chess or not chess. Um, dynamite with a power up thing, really tough. What do I use for zero downtime? Kubernetes. It's painful. But the reason I use Kubernetes is because I have game sessions and each game session holds a state. So it needs to be stateful between different requests. So I'm required to have something that has state. And that's where Kubernetes comes in. At top. Yeah, like, I wish I could have gone totally serverless because I feel like we're moving more in that direction. Um, and for other projects, I am serverless, but I can't be serverless for this one. Okay, let's see. Um, what do I want to do? I've got this be the bad thing. Um, I just close out of this. As long as I have a breakpoint, we're good. Animates. No. Kubernetes is clean on for I like pain. Yeah, so the thing with Kubernetes, I think that people really don't like about it is it's really confusing. There's a lot of options to set up uh, and that's totally fair. Retreated from the bowl club. Wolf, I might have to use a bowl just for that statement. Okay, if, if a car was in here, I would have to totally use a bowl right now. Look, I like my, my, my cups here. Okay, these are great. These work just fine. Small amount of space works great. Isn't serverless more expensive at the end? Uh, depends. So if you're talking dev time, no. Um, you gotta like consider developers are expensive. When you're just starting out, your main cost is gonna be developer time. So like when 
one or two hours is the cost, like in dev time, is the cost to run your entire infra or less. Why not just stay serverless? You scale way better. I like being able to sleep at night, so I just I use serverless. It doesn't really matter to me if it's a little more expensive. Um, it does matter when it's a lot more expensive. So, for example, like, um, well, there's certain services that are overpriced. I'm thinking of like Abley, for example. Abley is really, really expensive. Or um, Auth0 is just awfully expensive. I wouldn't use this. I would use Next Auth instead. Yeah. Like external active users. So professional, I mean, like, I'd almost have to use enterprise at this point. Because external active users up to like here, this, like, Funi is almost, is about half this right now. Yeah, absolutely what com Compiler said. Luckily, it only took a little bit of time to tweak my Kubernetes and now it's very hands-off. I don't think about it. Yeah, like dictator.gg, for example. This is free. This costs zero dollars a month. Okay, so what I want to do now is let's get this dynamite thing going. Choose map. Private. Okay, which one of these did I make? Oh, I want to fix this real fast. Teeny tiny little fix. What's for dinner? Oh, I don't know. How much do I spend on database? Um, that's been growing a lot. Really fast. Like, really fast. So here's the usage so far this month. So it looks like it's going to be about $80 for this month. Last month it was 40 before that it was 27 month before that was 14 month before that was like four so it's uh growing fast it's like exponential growth it's pain but it's okay the numbers are still small for now if it gets too bad, we can swap to planet scale. I think the migration to planet scale, if we start, uh, will take us about a week or two. And that involves setting up long polling and a whole bunch of other stuff. Maybe for a lot of you, white yet. Yeah. yeah, this is all maybe under the hood. But because of how custom it is, I probably would have saved time had I written this in Tailwind. Though. I did get a lot farther, a lot faster, because I had components already made for me. Though at this point, most of it's custom anyways. Is there any way to access the game? Yeah, just go to Funny. I 
And Nex is rubbing off on me? I think it's more like Theo rubbing off on me than Nex. Look, T3 is good. You know, the reason I use it is because I really like it. Okay, I think it was test 2. This might be the one that I want. That is not the one I want. What do I use to optimize Fernie's assets? I use a custom script. This generate images. So, I initially had the script which worked, but was ugly and also slow. Luckily, stream, uh, Steam chat or Twitch chat came through and made a really awesome version of this, which is super parallelized. And a huge shout out to Karayon for doing this. It's really awesome and fast now. So what it does is all of my image assets are in PNGs, and then this gets zot flipping and some other stuff. Um, so I'll take a PNG. I um, optimize it using stop flipping, which is lossless, and then I also uh, encode it at, or like transform transform it to WebP and AVIF for smaller file sizes. And with AVIF, I'm able to get about one tenth the size of the original PNG. It's ridiculously efficient. I love it so much. And you can pretty much use AVIF now. For your images. And then we also do conversions for GIFs. So GIFs are converted, I believe, to WebM right here. And this script runs as part of the build process. Hi, Coda. And then for games themselves, there's also this idea of sprite sheets. However, the thing that I use for sprite sheets is kind of bad right now. It uses a tool called Texture Packer. But Texture Packer does not work very well in Whistle. So if you're making games and you're thinking about sprite sheets, think twice before using Texture Packer. I cannot recommend it because right now it it breaks. Like the licensing is really, really painful. I I purchased it. I purchased like an unlimited license to use on one computer inside of Whistle and it breaks. I contacted support and they said there's nothing they could do. So I cannot recommend this. Have I considered using SVG? Uh, so I use SVG for certain things. There are times that SVG is very useful. The time it's useful is when you have very simple shapes. Um, so for example, Font Awesome or Hero Icons or something like that we have these really simple shapes, this is the place that you want to use SVGs. They're simple, they're small. Um, there's also some really fancy SVGs you can use for like a background or for um, like a, a placeholder image. So like if you don't have any data, sometimes you want to show a placeholder. Um, I don't remember the site, but there's a good one for it. You don't want to use SVGs when you have very complex shapes or images. For example, this here. There's a lot of blues, there's a lot of other things going on. This would be a bad place to use SVGs. Because to make an SVG that looks even somewhat similar to this, is a lot of work. And it's not going to look very good, and it's going to be huge. Um, it's also going to be very expensive because you have to actually generate that image on the client side. Because an SVG is just like a bunch of instructions, right? Uh, so hopefully that explains how you use SVGs. Like this in the background, this could be an SVG. This little shape here. Because it's simple enough. I don't even know if that's an SVG. Oh yeah, that's an SVG. So the, the reason you'd sometimes want to use SVGs is like, look how much you can zoom in. And it's still like, pretty crisp. But 
there are limits to it. Like, it's not perfect, right? Also, if you have SVGs, you can also sometimes compress them by removing some of the accuracy to the number of digits that each point is at, where you're slightly changing the SVG, but you can get the file size down. What I use for a horse in the chess game, those are all just regular images. I'm finally home. Well, oh yeah, welcome home, Goda. I think I said that already. Is it open sourced? Right, that it generates images scripts. So if I go to chest. Um, I believe it's this. Yeah, so here you go. How is VS Code online made? So, it's because the VS Code is actually like a web app, right? Like, I think. And then it was just, it's bundled in like an Electron app or something, I think. I don't actually know what for, um, they use, but it's it's probably pretty easy to figure out. I'm gonna assume React. Uh, let's see. Let's look at anything that's not. Uh, build, CSS, uh, loader, editor. Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, I have an idea. Let's just open this up. How am I so calm all the time during coding? Uh, I don't know. That's just how I am. Okay, what if I do you do? Um, it's just a bunch of tests. Okay, what about button? Private constructor. Okay, extends disposable. Create, so then is there a render? Wait, what do they use? I'm not actually sure what they're using. <laughs> Browser. Is this just like custom stuff? It almost looks like it's custom. Oh, it's just like just pure electron? Yeah, okay. Oh, very cool. This is like, there's so much code here though. Music. Like it's kind of ridiculous how much code there is. Okay, anyways, we'll close up this. Back over here. What do you mean by this one, 68? Alright, so this is what I want to do. So if I create this, I should be able to figure it out. Oh, Alright, this is what I want. 
so I can break it. Boom, broken. So I ran over this, but it still appears. So why does it break? So set game objects. I think it's okay. So last game objects. So there's a difference between these two. Emit a signal to enable the debugger. Oh goodness. communication it uses socket.io initially it used to use firebase real-time database but i ran into head of line blocking which was preventing me from sending too many packets at a time so socket.io fixes that they call it a feature oh no Now the trick is, how do I reproduce this accurately? Delete the old one, add a new one. I think what's happening is a new one is getting added. Create map or game object tile, okay. So I think this is what I'm going for. Howdy Darker, going pretty well. Alright, so what I'm expecting then is it to say creating game under tile, it didn't. Now it is creating a lot of bomb game object tiles, but they're always bombs. Oh right, yeah, because that makes sense. Because the enemies are placing bombs. Oh gosh, Denali, you too. Maybe I need like... Um... Foon steak or something, you know? Get foonsteak.com and just copy the code for Phony over and then change some stuff and make- oh gosh, I don't want to do that though. Is the game element a canvas? Yep it is. The theme is one dark. Okay, so check if we have an old game object that should be removed. So it's not coming here. This isn't the issue. Client dynamite map around line 300-ish. That's what I want. You like green strings? Yeah, I like green strings and ham. 
No, I prefer chicken. Chicken's tastier. Okay, this right here, this right, this is the one. Fix invisible bombs. So this is the bug. Let me go ahead, undo this part, and see if it's magically fixed. So power up removed. What is Opus? It is an audio format. It's an efficient audio format. However, it does not work on Safari, so don't use it. Um, unless you don't care about Safari. Personally, I don't care about Safari. To me, they should just be using a real browser, but a large percentage of people still use Safari, so you should support them. And I'll have to fix it at some point. Preference for using Firefox? Because Firefox isn't moving to manifest of E3. Oh no, that's not really why. But it is now. Okay, so everything should be fixed. It should magically work. But now there are invisible bombs. Okay, so that works a lot better. 3.4%. That's less than I thought. I thought like a 10% or more use Safari. Because anybody who's on an iPhone uses Safari. This is part of why I don't use an iPhone. Okay. Right. So... This is great. If this fixes the bug, then this causes the bug. If not, is empty. Yeah, I don't know. I am shocked. I thought Safari had more usage. Oh, but this is W3 Schools usage, right? So that may not be the same as like internet usage. Because maybe this doesn't work well on mobile. Or something, or for some reason, like they just get more traffic on desktop. Maybe because people who are writing code and actually visit W3 schools are probably writing code on a desktop. So this doesn't necessarily mean that this is accurate to the real usage. Like I've never gone to W3 schools on my my my, my phone. Like cuz I don't code on my phone. Um, however, there's also a site called Can I Use? Can I Use Opus? I don't know where they get their information about global usage here. Um, but you can see that globally, 12.8% according to Can I Use are on iOS on this particular version. Um, and more, it's more like 15 plus percent, 18, maybe more percent. There's, I know there's another way. Usage relative. Uh, something along these lines. Um, 
not sure exactly. I know there's another way to view this data. What does this website do? So this website will tell you whether you can use a feature. So anytime you're developing for a website and you want to use the latest, greatest thing, you want to go to can I use and you want to see what percentage you can, you can just kind of look at this number here and just make sure it's a large enough percent because this is like, you can either write really old code that works for everything, or you can say, okay, we just don't care about these bad browsers. Let's, oh yeah, let's compare browsers. I think that's what I wanted. Um, but this can kind of give you an idea of if you can use the thing or not. Uh, so for example, something that's really new is web transport. Web transport lets you use UDP over quick, I think, for really great uh, WebSocket kind of things. Unfortunately, it's only supported in Chrome and Edge because Edge is also Chrome as of now. So you can't actually use web transport. 30% global usage. That's really bad. That means your, your website is inaccessible for 70% of people or more just 70% of devices. So this is actually probably a larger percent because some people have a phone. I, for example, I own a phone. See? Phone. Um, and I also have a desktop with Chrome and Firefox. So the actual percentage of users this covers is way less. And yeah, so eventually it'll reach like Firefox. I'm really, really, I want this. I want this feature so bad. It's years into the future. Yeah, this is like five years away. But anytime you want to use a feature, you want to make sure that it's supported. So what is power exactly? And why does this break? Oh, push-ups. All right. All right, Yan. Let's do it. What do I think about Web3? Ooh, spicy. Spicy questions. I like Web3. I like the idea of someday having a uh, stock exchange that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where anybody can do options trading or anything else they want. That's awesome. I want that. I don't want some 9 to 5 stock exchange. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for the sub. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Pan. Hello, world. Well, thank you. All right, let's do these push ups. A big mug? Yeah, that's a decent sized mug. I'm still sore from yesterday. Goodness. I did a lot of push ups yesterday.
All right, let's see. A hundred push-ups, no way. I remember back when I first started programming and I couldn't even do one. Or not programming, but streaming. Okay. What city am I in? Uh, you want me to just give you my address? Um, I am in the Greater Seattle area. <laughs> Hi, Evan. What's my address? Uh, one, two, three, four, Mulberry Lane. That's odd. If not as empty else, console log. How does that make any sense? I would have expected it to hit this console log, right? Like, that would only make sense. Oh, it's continue. I forgot to continue. Wait, was that a bug? Did I actually forget the continue or did I remove the continue because I thought of... Hmm. Oh, prison. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I should have said that. Absolutely. Definitely. Retro. I should have been like, localhost. 127001. Wait a minute. Emeritus, you have the same IP as I do. Yeah, something that would be really cool. Oh, also, um, shout out to Evan, who streams uh, Foonie. So, yeah, uh, Evan is a fellow Twitch streamer who streams Foonie. And that's, that's all he does. No, he also works on his own site, which is really cool. He's got like this MMORPG called Retro MMO. only marketable skill. Oh jeez. Oh yeah, if you're, if you're at TwitchCon, uh, let me know, by the way, because uh, I'm going. The only stream is Spoonie. This is not true. There's also this really cool game, it's called Retro MMO. Uh, wait, what? Uh, what is this? Did I go to the wrong place? Oh, there's a dash in it. Okay. Yeah, this is a really cool game. I like the... the I like how difficult it is. Because it, it feels very much like Dragon Quest or something. And I like the networking. Because it's like, really hard to hack it. Uh, everyone's going except you? Oh darn. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go, but then I decided I wanted to go. Because I saw, like, some other uh, Twitch streamers are going that I'd like to hang out with, so... Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get to actually meet people.
Oh yeah, hi pizza. Partner win. Partner win. I'm waiting. Like, I don't care too much when I get it, just as long as I get it and can go to the partner thing at TwitchCon. Okay, let's see. So I think that this will make it work, I hope. Let's see, what happens if I continue here? You don't play chess online? Wait, too many cheaters, really? Cheaters and chess- oh, you mean like they use um, some AI or something? Yeah, I guess they could. I think I watched The Walking Dead. Oh, uh, let's see. You can't- oh, okay. Oh, Estra, thank you so much for the sub. Seven hours programming? Yeah, I mean, well, to be fair though, it's seven hours of like goofing off and programming. Does this. Uh, I don't know if this fixes it or breaks it. Okay, we'll try it. I'm gonna do a deploy. Let me know if the ghost bombs come back. Wait, how did we get, um... There was a way we did it where I could reproduce the ghost bombs every time. I'm trying to remember what I did to reproduce them. I think it involved... I think when I placed a bomb, I placed it on top of a power-up. As I grabbed it, I think. And I think that caused it to disappear. Okay, hold on. I think I, I can I can verify that this works or doesn't work. So this here is broken. So if I go to um that I might see in Well, errors, we don't care if this fails. Hmm. Yeah, I think what I want is just, let's see, um, which one's this? If action. Okay, so that means if we spawn, then do the thing. So much fun? Okay. Once a log. Alright, let's change the map. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Evan, I fixed some things on Fooney. So you'll notice that if you go to a uh, new room 
and you choose a map and or you go to subscribed this works again for you the reason it was breaking is because you had more than 10 um subscriptions to maps and that broke on firestore so i have a workaround it should work for you now take care emeritus what font am i using i'm using jetbrains mono for the code and exo for funi Okay, and then also, if you select one of these, and you create a map, it works. Oh wait, I just kicked myself out of the map. Whoops. Let's fix that. The font for coding? That's just the default in JetBrains. JetBrains Mono. That's weird. Howdy, Tizzy. Welcome back. Why is it not console logging this? There we are at location four seven. So I think this is how I break it. So if that's at 4-7, that means 6-5-4, up to 8. So between 4 and 8. So 4 to 8, if I do multiply that by 5, that means it's going to be 0 to that plus 4. Okay, I think it works. Oh wait, no, no, this is supposed to be broken, right? Oh, wait a minute. Duh. Thanks, Sahit. Alright, so as long as we refresh both clients, I should be able to see this now. This is the way. Oh, gee. To be fair though, 68, if you do delete your code, you can undelete it using local history on JetBrains. Super awesome. I found out about it because somebody in chat mentioned it. Oh, I love that feature. Wait a minute. Oh, I didn't fix the... Uh... That's not supposed to be floor X, that's floor Y. Okay, let's try this again.
It's moving me back. I don't want it to do that. So I think that's interfering with the bug. Add a marker to your local history. I did not know this was possible. That's weird. I cannot reproduce the bug. But I could have sworn this is how I did it. Okay, maybe whenever I broke it, I added like a comment explaining how to reproduce it. Because I could see myself doing that. question is, where would it be? Uh, do I still have it open on GitHub? Alright, let's just open it up again. So go here. Yeah, there's no comment. Okay, that's useful. Oh, I leveled up. Heck yeah. It increases all XP by 25.25%. That's huge. Because I have 20 of them. So it's like, actually something. This was huge too at 40. Hitting 40 in dynamite, really awesome. I need more of these. I need so many more of them. Okay, uh, anywho. A setup's like- okay, alright, fine. What shall it be? Setups or leg raises, your choice. Setups? Alright. <laughs> Lots of progress today? Heck yeah. We basically got checkers done. I mean, apart from like the configuration and stuff.
All right. Man, those are tough. And thanks for that. All right. So. Why am I unable to reproduce this? Oh, right. I think I remember why. I think it's because the packets come out of order. Don't wink. It still works fine. And I know that reordering it will also be fine. Sus? Oh yeah. I can make everything sus just by like winking. It's taken two years to make Pony. I've been writing code for 13 years. I used to work at Google. Yeah, I was like Thirty-three. Let's see, how many tutorial levels? All the pieces in the game. That that is a lot. What is Boulder Dash? A sus. Oh, a uh, sus means suspicious. So, for example, um, like red is acting sus or something would be like you're playing Among Us, and the red player is acting suspicious. Safe searches. Oh, that's definitely. Oh, that was dangerous. That was a risky click. Okay. Well, I think it works. So we're going to go ahead and commit this. I'm going to call it a day. Let's find someone to raid. Hopefully this one line fix fixes the stuff and doesn't break the stuff. Just real fast, I'll just refresh and make sure that it still doesn't break. Did I enjoy working at Google? Yeah, I did. For the most part. I especially liked my first manager. He was fantastic. Uh, I felt like I had a lot of freedom and a lot of like room to improve and it was great. I was learning a lot. It was fun. Um, 
So yeah, it just depends what team you're on. So what does this do? This fixes... Um, Power up. Pick up. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, it's a lot of internal text. So it's like CIDR, which is like this IDE, cloud IDE thing. Instead of pull requests, we did uh, CLs. And there's just like a lot of stuff that you have to relearn. Lots of internal things. Blaze instead of Basil. Um, it uses a mono repo. So all of the code in Google is in like a big cloud or whatever. And you just pull down what you need. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's do a deploy. And now let's find someone to raid. Should we raid? I'm thinking Mewtrue because I don't think we've raided her in like ever. Making a game in 72 hours. That sounds really cool though. So we could also raid Cherna. Hmm. We'll loot him there. Alright, we'll do that. Alrighty. Take care, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow.